Hey, everybody, it's time for Windows Weekly. Where are Paul? Where are Mary Jo? They're here, but we've got them in a can because <laughs> this is a canned episode. Uh, yeah, it's that time again, the end of the year. That means it's time for our best of 2018, some of the best moments. Windows Weekly for the year 2018. Enjoy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 601 for Wednesday, December 26th, 2018. The Year's Best. Well, ho, ho, ho! Happy holidays, everybody! <laughs> we gave Paul and Mary Jo the week off. They're not going to be here uh, uh, this episode or next episode because that's New Year's. Is that New Year's? It's day after New Year's. We wouldn't make them work. That would be that would be too much to ask. Will they be back on uh, January 2nd? Maybe we will. Oh, I'm so sorry, Paul and Mary Jo. I am so sorry. But at least we could give you the day after Boxing Day, as they call it, off. Windows Weekly has been, uh, of course, a source of mirth, merriment, and heavy drinking for many of you for many years, more than a decade. Uh, and we have some of the best bits from 2018, so the Paul and Mary Jo can take some time to be with their families. Starting with <laughs> some of the bad... That wasn't all bad news, but there was some bad news. The Spectre and Meltdown cures turned out to be, in some ways, worse than the problem. Watch. And Intel throw a little party uh, because they have to slow all the processors down by 30%. <laughs> that, should, uh, that should be fun. They should be in a good mood. I, uh, in, I always think of uh, Intel when I think of um, tech stocks because my dad, back in the 1990s, Invested in, tried to invest in tech stocks, oh, but he couldn't handle good. it because yeah, it was Intel. Like yeah. every time Intel's competitors announced anything, right, mm. Intel stock would nosedive, and then Intel would mm. announce something, and their tech, yeah. you know, the stock would go skyrocketing. And he couldn't stand that kind of volatility. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what's happening this week. You know, this um, this issue may or may not be the major, you know, apocalypse that some people believe it is, but it is triggering this. Stupidity yeah. with the stock market because you know, yeah, that's what. Well, happens. it's funny because uh, we talked about it on Security Now, and uh, you know, I listened to it, and Steve mm -hmm. didn't. His hair wasn't on fire, so I thought, oh, well, it's, <laughs> they can't. You know, <laughs> okay. Well, well, we don't have enough information yet, we, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an exploit that's not been uh, documented because nobody wants anybody to know about it, which is. So let's just jump ahead to one thing because we did have this in notes, but I, I think it's important for people to understand that on the client side, the impact is probably going to be minimal. And Microsoft's already fixed it. So um, if you're an insider, you have the fix already. It's in the latest builds. Oh, if good. you're on the normal versions of Windows 10, you will get it on Patch Tuesday. So I I, I think the big question with this thing is going to be how it impacts um, data centers, servers, and the cloud. And it's supposed to be worse there. But I feel like the story is changing every day. So mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. register is the one that kind of scared everybody because they said mm, that the sure. patch, which will happen to all machines running Intel processors, that's Linux, FreeBSD, mm -hmm. Apple, yeah. and Windows, and anything else, uh, all, in, all Intel processors will see a slowdown because of the new uh, way they have to handle protected memory uh, mm -hmm. of 5 to 30%, which would be pretty awful. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I don't since know if that's we've true. Heard it's yeah. actually yeah. not that high. Yeah. That may have been. You know, that, that story is so strange in a lot of ways. There's no sourcing mm -hmm. on that story, for one. Right. If yeah. you look at it. Right. Right. Where I mean, there's no one saying from. it, but somebody told them this, obviously. But who? I wonder who, could that, who, who might have that have been? Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody's stock went up today, I noticed. Somebody at AMD? Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm. Although, you I mean, know. AMD is partnering with Intel um, on that new chipset. Right. Uh, right. Well, that was the I other thing that I noticed in the registry story. It said newer Intel chips won't be mm -hmm. nearly as impacted. Yep. Especially you the ones with AMD. You also got to look at Qualcomm, it. right? Um, if yep. Intel <laughs> chips were 30% slower, that means they would only be five times as fast as Qualcomm chips. So <laughs> you were uh, <laughs> running Ouch. with them. Ouch. Yeah, this it's I I don't I'm not doubting that this is a real thing that is about to happen, but sure. it whenever a story is sourced like this, when you're a journalist, you think like, like this, um, right? Yeah. 
who did it? <laughs> it's like something you say on the eve of like a marriage or something. Like, I'm not doubting that this is going to happen. I'm just saying I have, you know, I have some qualms about not it. Doubting. <laughs> right. Here's, I mean, look at this line. It is understood that the bug is present in modern Intel processors. Why do you, why do you say it in that stilted way? Because somebody told you and you can't quote them. <laughs> right. 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 Well, well, good. All yeah. right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> It seems like there are way, there is wiggle room to say that in a better way. Yeah, yeah. Sources we'll find out matter. soon, like you said. I mean, I I'm really curious what it's going to happen on the on the data center server side because we already know Microsoft next week is uh, has posted a blog saying that there's going to be a maintenance event with Azure where they're going to shut <laughs> down all the VMs. What? A maintenance um, that's event. It. So that's, by yeah. the way, that's the, that's because you know, they when said, the uh, asteroid yeah, hit the earth and killed all the dinosaurs, also <laughs> a, a maintenance, maintenance event. event. Yeah. <laughs> but they, you know, Microsoft, I, I call them today, I'm like, so that's the thing, right? And they're like, no, we're not saying that. We have nothing to share. Yeah. Well, everybody, that's <laughs> one cause for concern is how tight lipped everybody is. Yeah. The sure. register yeah. might have gotten it from the Linux kernel mailing list because they did mention yeah. that the Linux kernel is being patched right. in public. Uh, even though there's okay, but, very, very little documentation for what they're doing. Mm. You can't extrapolate what happens to Linux to other operating systems. You know, that's right. the other thing. Right. Uh, mm. th it would be interesting if this thing impacted Linux between 5 and 30% and it impacted Windows 0.3%. You know, and that would, might give you some insight mm -hmm. into the relative, uh, yeah. you know, performance of either system or whatever at certain tasks. I mean, I, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I would just yeah. say. Don't, no, don't, we'll see. no yeah, hair don't, on Don't fire. freak out, buddy. No hair on fire. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. What I enjoy about this is, you know, because, uh, you know, Twitter especially, but I think our entire tech world now is like this knee jerk reaction to everything. Um, mm -hmm. There are guys on Twitter today who are like, this is why I only buy AMD. Well, that's <laughs> it's yeah. like, really? Yeah. You're Nostradamus. You looked ahead into the future and saw yeah. <laughs> that this was going to happen. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday, the United States Supreme Court, aka mm -hmm. SCOTUS. SCOTUS. <laughs> SCOTUS, which is really an undignified nickname. But anyway, it is. Yeah, it's perfect in many ways. <laughs> SCOTUS heard arguments on the Microsoft versus the United States of America. Uh, this is the Irish email. It mm -hmm. is. Case of the Irish email. It the is. case of the, well, it's like a, uh, like a murder mystery. <laughs> Sherlock the Holmes and the case yeah. of the Irish mm -hmm. email. Yes. yes, the moors were foggy this morning. <laughs> we were sitting at 22B Baker Street when a curious man knocked on the door. <laughs> Hello, Governor. Yes, Mr. Gates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I have a problem. <laughs> My email's stored in Ireland. Yep, so it's the magic of software. The uh, mm -hmm. issue is the Department of Justice uh, wants access to uh, yep. emails uh, in an investigation of a, a drug trafficking case stored mm -hmm. on Microsoft servers over there in Dublin, where all the leprechauns live. A federal judge in New York had issued a warrant. Microsoft challenged the order in court, and it is now in front of the Supreme Court of the land. Yeah, this has gone back and forth literally to yes. every tier of the legal system that exists. <laughs> yep. And uh, it is now at the pinnacle of that system. <laughs> so I guess we'll yes. see, but... This is not a no. clear-cut case, right? I mean, it's not. You can make great arguments in either in, in either direction, and I, I think the the bad part from a technology enthusiast perspective is imagining the chilling effect it would have if the United States government, in effect, ruled that U.S. companies, or that the U.S. government itself, can seize data stored in data centers that are physically in other countries. Now yeah. this, uh, according to Mary Jo Foley's article at ZDNet, uh, could be taken out of uh, SCOTUS's hands, mm -hmm. if uh -huh. SCOTUS has hands, uh, by the United <laughs> States Congress. Tiny little, <laughs> tiny little SCOTUS <laughs> hands. Because there's something yep. called the Cloud Act. Yep. Uh, what, is that, what does that do? Right. So yesterday, um, you know, so, so I should say, since the beginning, since 2013, when this case started, Microsoft has been making the argument that, you know what, this shouldn't even be something that's settled by the courts. It should be something that is settled by law. Um, so now there is a bipartisan um, proposal for a law uh, about this very topic, about how data is governed in the cloud. Um, and so yesterday when they had this hearing, according to the AP and Reuters, who had reporters there, um, a couple of the justices 
were saying, you know, why are we even talking about this? Like, shouldn't we just wait and like let this law take effect and have this be decided in Congress instead of by the court? Uh, so actually reading reading these reports about what happened during Microsoft's argument yesterday, it sounds like Microsoft is likely to lose this case. I can't say they will for sure because you never know what's really going to happen. But Yeah, that's my um, guess too. I think they're going to lose. And yep. you can kind of see Microsoft setting themselves up to say it's okay because we're going to now count on Congress to govern on this and not uh, the courts. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at with it. The court is supposed to rule on this at the end of June. I don't know when the Cloud Act or how far along the Cloud Act is um, along the path towards becoming something. But uh, I think we have video of the Cloud Act uh, do, attempting to. Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm wrong camera. Like, I apologize. Cloud. <laughs> Just clouds. <laughs> Just cl it was clouds. Just a bunch um, of clouds. So the Cloud Act uh, is good for Microsoft. I mean, you know, I, I think what they, what Microsoft and not just Microsoft, by the way, Amazon, Apple, a lot of the companies in tech, anyone who has something in the cloud, are worried about is this whole chilling effect of if if the U.S. is allowed to go and seize data, what's going to happen to them in their cloud business? Right. I mean. Nobody in other countries will want to put data in these clouds because they'll say, right. wait, your Although, government can steal it. <laughs> already GDPR is requiring that that data be stored That's right. in uh, European clouds. And mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. you know, Apple just moved the iCloud data and keys to China yep. because they record, mm -hmm. require that. Right. I presume yep. Microsoft will do the same with OneDrive. Yeah, so, you know, Microsoft... Microsoft did an interesting thing um, a couple of years ago with the German data centers where they actually created data centers in Germany that keep the data there and they're administered by a third party data wow, trustee. Right. Yeah, that's, um, what, so that's what Apple's going to do in China. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they're kind of trying to head this off in multiple ways. I but, mean, I think this is the this is just what's going to happen, right? It's it just, is, uh, I think. Uh, I don't know if this well, is, so it breaks the internet in a way, but... Uh, does anybody know the, the person in question who apparently is a suspected drug dealer or something? Is that the right. deal? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are they a U.S. citizen? Yes, I think that's um, okay. Why was their data okay? Are they? Are, are, well, they Actually, broke U.S. Know. law. You know this, Mary Jo, more than I do. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think if is the person a U.S. citizen. I can't remember. I think the person is. Okay, I mean, uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, it matters in some ways, but um, it's fair to say that this person allegedly broke some U.S. law by do, by some activity related to drugs or whatever. So the case kicked off, court. this is from Tech Republic, the case kicked off in 2013 when prosecutors obtained a warrant for the emails of a suspect in drug trafficking investigation, which was mm -hmm. stored in Dublin. Obviously, the, if the U.S. is, is investigating it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean oh, wait, that the, resident of Ireland. So the I person is a resident of Ireland. So he is a resident yeah. of Ireland, but the U.S. government's yeah. going after him. That explains why the data was in Ireland. Yeah. Right. All right. This is, yeah. a, you know, it's a, it's a sticky. That's sticky interesting. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's um, above and beyond this. GDPR thing. Yeah, this is completely right. outside of that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and you know, a but, lot, a lot of people In fact, this would what? violate, Microsoft's brief said this would violate GDPR if they were to give mm -hmm. this to this the uh, U.S. investigators, Department of Justice. Right. And it could be yeah. penalized <laughs> by, in Europe with a fine <laughs> as much as $3.6 yeah. billion dollars for doing mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So that's, I, think I if understand if they forwarded that. that to the U.S. government, they would pay the bill. You know, it's all fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, this is really uh, a sticky. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not. It's it not clear cut at all. No matter what your feelings no. are about this case, um, I think anyone would basically agree that there are, you know, there's a case to be made in either direction. I agree with Mary mm -hmm. Jo. I think the Supreme Court is going to rule against Microsoft. I hope you're enjoying our best of 2018. We'll get right back to the clips in just a second, but I do want to ask a little favor of you, a gift, if you will, that you can give us this holiday season. We do this every once in a while, a survey. We like to get to know our audience a little bit better. This year, our survey focuses on how and if, I guess, you use collaborative software work. I know a lot of you do. In fact, most workplaces these days use collaborative software. So we just want some information. It'll help us uh, program uh, shows for you and help us with advertisers so we can explain what our audience is interested in. It shouldn't take more than six minutes. And I know this is important to you. It's certainly important to me. No, we will not collect any personal data. We do appreciate you doing it, though. Twit.com. 
twit.to slash survey12 is the address. Twit.to slash survey12. You can do it while you're listening. It won't take you very long. Uh, and I do appreciate your uh, doing it. Now, on we go with the show. Do we have an update? Are, are we ready to muggleize? Yeah, we think we are. We're getting there. We think so. Yeah. Okay, so that's but that. Microsoft won't say so far that this is. They have not RTM. said, but this is clearly. And it's if it's not this, it's going to be a point something of this. You know, this is yeah. I think it. And and Mary Jo, you say you think this is actually going to be called the Spring Creators Update? Really? You know, they still haven't given us the name. That name's leaked out in a few different places wow. over time. And at this point, if they don't have another name, um, yeah. What's the difference? It's getting late. <laughs> Redstone 4 works. Spring yeah. Creators Update. I like okay. Redstone 4. I really do. 1803 is perfect. I don't know why they can't yeah. just do that. So, right. Yeah. So, so, so there have been places that yeah. have been called it's, that. It has. Yeah. Now, yeah. that's not going to be confusing because we had a Spring Creators Update yeah, right. last year. That's not going to be Well, confusing. that was actually yeah. just called the Creators Update. Oh, that yeah. was the original Creators Update. And then there mm. was the fall. Oh, well, this, but that would make sense. They're going to get yeah, into overloading what do we call this, this fall, fall if they keep doing it. Overloading yeah. starts this fall. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, by the way, like I said, Xbox does the same thing. It's Spring yeah. Update, you know, Fall Update, some November Update sometimes, whatever. They've never put a year on actually, it. So in a way, that's kind of reassuring. It's just, you know, like the seasons. Except... Except sometimes there's the old spring update and the new spring update also both in support at the same time. Yeah, right. That, right. right. That, no, that's true. Uh, I I guess, you know, again, this is this is just semantics. I mean, it, it kind of doesn't matter. I know. But Call it, it bothers me when people <laughs> refer to Windows 10 version anything as anything something something update because the update is yeah. the thing that brings it to that version. I don't true. think Windows 10. Oh, now version, that is you know, really three. picky. That is really. Yeah. That's why I said it was semantics. <laughs> but I, you know, but it's version, not the version you're getting. Le you're Leo, getting Leo, Leo, the update. Listen to me, okay. Leo. Yeah, this is important. <laughs> it's not an update. It's, it's a, a release. It's a semi-annual <laughs> channel. <laughs> listen, just gotta, to be precise. Oh, it's a, a suck. Reason. You got to give me this. I'm sorry, sack. Sack. What, it's a sack. <laughs> It's, yeah, semi-annual it channel. Semi -annual channel. Sack. Sack. <laughs> anyway, right, when, 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 when? It's going to start happens? rolling out in April, Somebody. we know, to well, mainstream. I believe but it's we don't uh, have the, the end of March eight. right now. Yes, it we should be very rumors soon. about this, didn't we? Um, as yeah. As soon as, oh, I think people were talking about Patch Tuesday. which is Yeah, the first Patch Tuesday. Tuesday. The 10th, uh, is well, that right? April 10th or somewhere around there. Because they tend to roll these, start rolling them out on Patch Tuesdays. So, yep. that oh, that's interesting. Make... So the first, so Tuesday actually is the third of April. So it could be as soon as well, the, the second, second Tuesday is traditionally Tuesday. second Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so it'd be the tenth. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, that makes sense. We're, that's a guess when yeah. it may start rolling. That makes sense. Yeah, I see, yeah, I don't remember. Someone was talking about this on Twitter, but I don't. I know. I saw that too. Uh, maybe it was um, Zach at Window Central. Zach Bowden, maybe. No. Somebody was. What are we? Out. So, uh, so, the, so you're using no. pro, in all likelihood, Paul. You're using the RTM or something off. I better be. I just switched every one of my computers over to this thing. So <laughs> you have confidence. This is the final. Version. Yeah, I mean, like I said, if it isn't literally the final, um, and there are always these updates that occur between whenever they finalize right. it, whenever they release it to mm -hmm. the public. So there's going to be cumulative updates. This, it, they could rev this thing. There could be another build to the Windows Insider program that's. This build number point, you know, two or three or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is clearly it, um, as clear as it can be, we given done. the mud that we're given. We yeah. done. Yeah. So, uh, anything new? Uh, I mean, are we kind of these? They must have frozen no. features months ago. Yeah, we're we were just reviewing <laughs> well, the features ago, because you know what? You kind of forget because we get all caught up yeah. in like this build has this little thing and this right. build has that. But if somebody says to you, what is in Redstone four? What, is, what am I going to get when I get Redstone four? And then you have to go back and go, okay, what are you going to get in Redstone four? Well, I mean, timeline is the obvious, right? It's well, that's the big one, but honestly, I don't think a lot of people are going to even notice timeline. <laughs> you know, I know, it's kind of because um, the apps aren't ready for it, right? So, well, you know, that's interesting. So, let me see if I what I get on this computer because it's this is different. But I was looking at this on my other computer, and yeah, so on this computer, it actually shows Markdown, uh, Markdown Pad 2, which is the you know, the mm. text editor that I okay. use. There's no way that app supports this feature natively, it isn't supported, uh, mm. the app itself, that is. Um, it shows websites. I'm using Edge right now, so I don't know. Yeah. 
what that means exactly. I don't see any Chrome stuff in here. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, it's unclear. Maybe if it's document-based, it just happens. I, I'm just guessing there because I can't explain why Markdown Pad would be in there. Yeah. But like I said, I don't see any ed, um, Chrome activity. I don't think Chrome is supposed to be in there at all, right? I don't see it. No. So that would that kind of make. I only have a few days of data, unfortunately. Yeah. On, on this computer. Yeah. So sets didn't make it in. Sets is a Redstone Five thing, but timeline is. So it it would have been better if you had timeline and sets together, because then I think that would have made it work more like what people are thinking it's going to be like. Exactly, um, because you could go back to a point in time and say, <laughs> right. "Open this thing in a set." Right. You know, and it could be all of those application windows at that point in time. Yep. In its own you know, kind of single window with tabs. Yeah, yeah. But that's not going to be there yet. So it's like timelines there, no sets. Um, but another one that is there, because we, we've been covering it, and especially Paul has, PWA is there, PWA mm -hmm. support. Um, yeah. In fact, today we saw a partial list of the sessions that are going to be at Build, and PWA is listed as one of them, so... Thank goodness Finally. they're going to talk about that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, seriously, they re I, they haven't advertised anything like that. I know. Uh, ever, <laughs> if no. I'm not mistaken. I mean, I know. yeah. So that's good. So, yeah. <clears throat> how how does that appear? Do you uh, do you go to the store and well, then can yeah, you tell so, what's happening? Even I mean, no, no, no. I mean, um, if they didn't tell know, you, because, you wouldn't know. That's right, and 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 that's the point, right? And it, you, you could go back know. to Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could go back to Windows 8, and and the application platform at that time supported development using various languages and uh, various frameworks and so forth. And one of them was JavaScript. And so uh, I think the early, um, you know, mail calendar apps and so forth were Windows Live productions. They were done in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And if you if you weren't told that, I don't think anyone would look at that app and say this is a web app. You know, like I right. I, I don't think anyone would ever know that. Um, and so yeah, the goal with PWA is that there just it, there should just be more apps in the store. And hopefully, mm -hmm. and for some people, they might be familiar, right? Because some of the famous ones that we see out in the world will probably appear in the store. And uh, if you use them on Android or whatever, you, you say, oh, I, you know, I know this app. Yeah. Like, this is this is what I want to see on Windows as well. Well, like Twitter is an example, right? Twitter's going to mm -hmm. be PWA app in the store yeah. supported yeah. In, in Redstone 4. So, That's right. yeah, it's interesting, though. Like, it, the, the way you will know it works is if people don't know. That they're using a yeah, PWA, right, exactly. basically. <laughs> if you wanted the to people, investigate, you could probably look on the disk and see man manifests and stuff, right? There'd be some sort of yeah. You could you could try to discover why a 245 byte PWA has turned into a 10 megabyte <laughs> UWP, <laughs> you know, because of all the unbelievable you know cladding that they have to throw around it. Um, and then there are the really technical people, like I just two people on Twitter is it kind of classic right before this the show were complaining. Well, I was complaining about this. Um, you know, please review my app pop up that appears in the Twitter app now. And uh, it's like, oh, it's a great first impression of PWAs. It's like, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this, hey, this has nothing to do with PWAs. This is the store popping this thing up. It's a store process. Yeah. But more to the point, nobody, th nobody's having first impressions of PWAs. There's no impression at all. First Im right. Yeah, it's an impression of an app. You but know, it, but a, it started, the app started uh, as a as a web page. So you... Or, yeah. or do you go to the store? To, I mean, you get it as a no, you go to the store. So oh, you go to the in, store. In, okay. Yeah. In RS4, discoverability only happens through, and actually I should say, installation only happens through the store. Microsoft has talked about their desire to have these PWAs pop up in search results. If I, if you went to search and said, I want a Twitter app, you know, at the top it could say, hey, you're running Windows 10. You should, you know, click here to install the Twitter app. Right. Um, but that does not, that's not happening in RS4. Um, so that's something, something for the future. That's how it works in Android, right? You you just come across a website that is a PWA and it advertises itself either very explicitly with a banner at the yeah. bottom or you can just go through the, you know, the menu add to, I think it says add to home screen or whatever the, the text is. Okay. I mean, in theory, you could also get it, uh, eventually you'll be able to get it in a web browser, right? That would be browse yeah, to it. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. That's the plan. But so for right now, all right. And will it say in the store, like, you know, have some special mark that says PWA? It has the, it is a 666 right under the about box. <laughs> the mark, um, the mark of the beast. Um, yeah, it's, right it's there. name okay. is Legion. Okay. It's version number is Legion. The bigger story is Terry Meyerson out at Microsoft. He would, how long has he been? He's been at Microsoft for decades, but he was in charge of Windows for, since uh, Sanofsky, right? 
Right. Uh, Pretty much. Almost, almost. Well, yeah. Brief, brief one year period when he was not. But we forgot about yeah Microsoft's version of the Gerald Ford presidency was stuck in there for <laughs> <laughs> a year or two. So yeah. was this uh, okay? Tell us the story of how you found this out first of all. Okay. Um, so because you Microsoft, broke this, right, Mary Jo? I mean, you this was your story. Well, not no, I, I wouldn't say I broke it. I I would say Microsoft timed it so that it would show up at right after the the memo went out to everybody inside the company. So, you know, the memo went out 10 a.m. East Coast time last Thursday, and then we could post our stories after that. So they called us and told us kind of the gist of it, and. I, I was worried because I knew Paul was traveling that evening. <laughs> yep. And the next morning, I saw from his Twitter stream that he got into Colorado very late. And so I really sat there and debated back and forth if I should wake him up and tell him what we knew. But I decided not to. If I if you don't mind me just interjecting quickly, um, <laughs> Brad and Mahedi did the same thing. They knew I told them, look, I'm going to be out for the duration. Um, I don't care what happens. I'm not going to be available. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> and well, we just had the, the busiest eight hour back to back days. Plus we got in at three o'clock in the morning. So you were tired. Right. You were tired. Um, but then, you know, it, <laughs> I, I, I'm not that remote that I don't know what's going on. And so I see this stuff and I contacted Brad and I contacted Mary Jo and they told me what she just said. And I said yeah. to Mary Jo, you know, I got to say, you handled this a lot better than you did when Steven Sanofsky left. <laughs> <laughs> because that time I was driving a basketball and she called me screaming and I almost drove my car off the road into a telephone pole. <laughs> and I distinctly not. remember thinking, like, yeah, like she was literally screaming. And I said, you know, I don't know where she lives. And if something's happening to her, I can't tell <laughs> the police how to find her. You guys are so cute. You, know? you act like this stuff really matters. I love that about you. <laughs> Come on, man. It matters. Does it? So why does it? Yeah. First of all, was he fired? Okay, so here's, you know, Microsoft was very careful to make it look like this is an orderly transition and he's sticking around for a few months to help, you know, pass the baton, the whole thing, right? But you got to wonder how it actually happened. And my theory about what happened is they decided on a reorg structure where he no longer fit into the picture and they probably offered him some other things inside the company and he decided right. not to take them. Right. That's, That's my That guess. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so he's totally leaving. They, him were, they were of a lower level structurally, I think is. Yeah, likely. I would assume. Right. So um, this is how it goes down. So Terry Meyerson is going to be leaving within a couple of months. And uh, immediately Microsoft is taking the Windows and Devices group and splitting it in two. So part of it is going under Rajesh Jha, who right now runs the office business at Microsoft. And part of it is going under Scott Guthrie, um, who right now runs cloud and enterprise. They're, they're creating these new groups, combining in the Windows people. Um, so there's one that's going to be called Experiences and Devices. That's the one under JA. And some of the people who reported to Meyerson are going there, like Panos Panay is going there. Um, Brad Anderson's going there. Kudos Sonoda is going there. So they're going in that part of, of the new org. And then under Guthrie, you're taking all the Windows engineering team and moving them in with server and Azure so that it's all people who are involved with Windows engineering together in one group. Now, this is an annual uh, right of the spring at Microsoft, right? I mean, Pretty this, much. they reorg every Pretty year much. at this time. How is this different? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> quite a, a bit different. A couple ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for one... Um, I, I would say a difference is that before they would kind of take teams wholesale and move them around. Um, it's unusual that they're taking away a group that ha that has basically been the identity of Microsoft and kind of scattering it to the wind, as several people have described. Wow. It. Um, yeah. Uh, it also is interesting. And I, I didn't really think about this. I forget who reported this first, but there's no no longer someone who represents Windows on the senior leadership team at Microsoft for the first time. Oh, that's interesting. So that's yeah. okay. So that yeah. so some people use the term demotion. Right. Some yeah. people, Leo. 
<laughs> Some people like the guy right here. Is that guy. is that so? Really, That's it where does. That comes from. It does sound like that in the sense that um, Windows is no longer the crown jewel at Microsoft. Has it? By the way, hasn't been for some time. And I, while. yeah, and I think the weird thing about this because it's funny we we've we've talked about this potential for a long, long time. You know. Um, there was a time when Windows rep represented the largest chunk of revenues that Microsoft made. There was a time when Windows was number two behind Office. And then there was a time when Windows was number three behind Office and Server. Um, today, Windows represents 16% uh, of Microsoft's revenues for the last uh, fiscal year. Really? Is that all? Um, wow. Yeah. They, uh, that 10 true, years though? earlier, they were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's yeah. what happens when you give it away. For one well, thing. because I I went back and looked at their like latest quarter after you and I mm -hmm. talked yesterday, Paul. And yeah, it's still a big. It's still right. a lot of the company. I well, mean, it, the remember that org is more than just Windows, and it is. Uh, it is. Yeah, but but so yes. there's part. I mean, it's called more, more personal computing, right? That's that's the group that Windows and devices is in, and so is Xbox, by the way, and MSN and Bing ads. Those are all in this more personal computing. But last. Last quarter, they had twelve thousand. Tw sorry, twelve billion dollars in revenue. Office right. had nine. Yeah. Um. So it's not like they are really falling down. And you know, gaming isn't a huge piece of that, really. Uh, but Windows well, is. Um, no, gaming's probably. It's it's grow <laughs> it's growing more yeah. slowly. When so I think a lot of what Microsoft did last week is 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 twofold, right? It's they want people to see that they're focused on the future and Windows isn't the future right. of the company, right? Yep. Um, cloud is, um, enterprise is, not consumer, um, not devices, although devices are still going to be an important piece. But um, the other part is they're trying to, I don't know if I would obs say obscure Windows, but they're trying to make it so that it's not so obvious what's going on with Windows, which is it's becoming a smaller yeah. piece of the business, right? But also, I, I think they don't want people to point to it and say, hey, uh, yeah. this thing's still doing pretty good. You're still over overly reliant on the yes. one piece of the Agreed. puzzle. You're not moving into the future. You know, I, I, I think they want to get rid of that, yeah. or, you know, that problem because then they look stodgy and old. Right. It's like, hey, by the way, you're still making an awful lot of money from Windows, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Microsoft. Well, uh, and I think, so the, but I think, and that's important to remember because I saw so many people saying, well, that's it. They're, like, they're going to be like tossing Windows now and like, that's it for Windows. Windows is gone and it's over. No, Windows is going to be sticking <laughs> around because they make a lot of money yeah. from Windows. <laughs> so there was a demo, Leo, in the middle of this, like maybe like two hours in or an hour and a half in where <laughs> they... <laughs> They showed um, this whole scenario of a meeting, uh, like a concept video. Uh, it wasn't a video, a demo. It was of a live, meeting though, in, wasn't it? I, I saw yeah, a meeting a, in the future. I saw yeah, some coverage of that. Cool. I think I saw Tom's article and I saw some tweets yeah. about it. And it was a yeah. very diverse work group from all over the world, right? This is Microsoft's mm -hmm. Teams. Right, yeah. it was Teams. And Cortana was part of it. And um, also Ambient Intelligence. So they, they showed this device in the middle that yeah, looked like a that, cone. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> the black cone. It was a dunce hat. <laughs> yeah. It was it, a it sorting like hat. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Harry yeah. It was like a really hat. funky polycon, yeah. essentially. Yeah. But oh, they okay. built it. They built it to use it as uh, like a prototype to show you like, hey, if you had this kind of a device in here and you walked I in and it said, hi, Tom, yeah. thanks for joining the meeting. And right. so it had like recognition and it had built in reminders through Cortana. I'm like, OK, see, that was interesting. And people couldn't like think about concepts when they see that. I thought they would have more of that. I was surprised. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah, because you can you could stand on stage and talk about AI and quantum computing and, you know, like the future waves of computing and stuff. But to show it like that is people can appreciate that, right? Like you can understand yeah. it. Oh, okay, this is really clever. It's using um, certain learnings and stuff, and um, it, it's stuff that just you can connect with it more. Um, and I think that like they need more of that today, really. Right. Um, they had yeah. the drone stuff, yeah, whatever. The drone on stage is kind of like played out at this point. Eric um, Duckman in our chat room says the real time transcription was pretty cool. It was. Yeah, 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 that was part of that uh, of the uh, the meeting demo. Yeah, and it was really accurate. Um, it didn't really fail over at all. The only part of it that wasn't real was the your phone stuff. Like they they used obviously yeah. like a direct clearly video. Was, yeah, clearly. So tell us yeah. about that. What was the your phone thing? Is that so, a new app? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's essentially a new app. Um, we don't really know exactly everything about it yet because they've been really thin on details and they're promising to demonstrate it further tomorrow. But essentially, um, it's going to connect definitely to Android devices and bring in your notifications from your Android device, your messages and your photos. And you'll be able to actually drag and drop those photos between the two. So you'll have the app on your PC um, and be able to you know, send texts and back and forth with contacts and stuff without having to touch your phone. That's kind of like the idea behind it. So they've kind of been doing little bits of this through Cortana and, and various other apps that they've been trying out, even Skype at one point. Um, but this is like a separate app now. So, yeah. yeah. I'm excited about the picture thing because Paul knows. He sees me do this all the time. I take a picture on my phone and then yeah. I email it to myself. And he's like, did you just email that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, there's still, there's still, like, that basic experience is still... You can use, like, Google Photos or OneDrive and stuff like that, but it's still... There's a little, little lag of, like, getting that photo. There's no, like, quick way of just taking a photo from your phone and getting it instantly on your PC. Yeah. So this this could be could be interesting for that. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see more about it tomorrow. Oh, you know, the other interesting thing they did was the Cortana Alexa integration demo. I was actually uh, surprised yeah. they did that. Uh, so, you know, we've been hearing that they were going to integrate Cortana and Alexa since last summer, and no one has really seen it work on, on the outside. I mean, there's people inside who are in the private beta or, or preview, yeah. but they showed it live on stage, and the way that you did it was surprising to me. I didn't know that Cortana would actually open on an Echo. Yeah, so... it. it I guess it's slightly clunky in a way because you've got the way you've got to call it up because of the way that the both platforms kind of share different, um, or shares similar sort of interactions. Like you can say, you know, hey, Cortana, turn the lights on. You can say the same on Alexa. Um, so you have to like call up Alexa or Cortana on each one to like activate it. And then the voice changes and, you know, you're talking to Cortana or you're talking to Alexa. Um, I think it was an interesting demo. Um, I don't know, like, how many people are really going to use Cortana for Alexa yeah. um, that much? But, I mean, it does open up. It means that every Windows 10 PC now has Alexa built in, um, which is kind of interesting in a way. Um, it's, but it's, it's a clunky way that you have to get to it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just interesting that pair are working together anyway. I'd, I'd like to see the integration go a bit deeper. Um, I like Alexa and, and the skill set and stuff, but it would be nice if uh, Cortana was just the, you know, the voice of Alexa. Um, I, I can't imagine that ever happening, but it would be nice if it did. Because um, Microsoft's um, Cortana voice is obviously recorded by Jen, who was, who was Cortana in Halo. Um, and it's just a, a much better, it's, it re- responds a lot better than um, Siri or Alexa. So. But yeah, um, it was an interesting demo. Though. Everybody's <laughs> so excited about the new Surface 2 <laughs> Hub, available sometime next year. It was kind of a weak product announcement. <laughs> Excuse me if for saying that, but well, it didn't really say much about. I mean, what? It, I, I think there's a rationale behind what's the way the, they did. Why it, are although, they even mentioning it now? It's not even out yet. Actually, I think we can explain that. Okay, please I do. Know, we can. Please do. That's what you're here for. It's your job <laughs> is to make. I things, knew I was here for some your, reason. <laughs> your job make things clear for Leo. What are we doing again? <laughs> Windows Wait. Weekly. What show is this? What's going on? <laughs> right. Is this real life? <laughs> so if, if you think about a Surface Hub as it exists, it's a very expensive mm-hmm. enterprise product. Yes. And I mean, like the, the cheaper of the two models is like um, nine, eight or $9,000. And the more expensive one is like $22,000 for the 84 inch. So this isn't a product like that somebody goes into a Best Buy and goes, hey, let me buy one of those, right? right. It's, a, it's a product that, has a really long sales cycle. Like people have to go in and kick the tires and get approvals from their managers and get it um, put into the corporate budget. So I think that is why Microsoft announced it the way they did this week. It's like, let's tease the customers a little bit and show them what we have been working on and get them to start thinking about buying one of these. And then You know, starting this summer, we'll tell them a little more, let them start seeing it by end of year in a private preview, and then they can make the decision to buy. There's also the issue that Surface Hub has been on the market now for 
what over a year, two years? What I don't know. Two I years. Remember, yeah. Two years. Two years. So, in, in addition to that long buying cycle, which is very real, the product has never been able to meet demand. You know, the they, the supply has never been there to meet the demand. So there's a long waiting list. And when you're you have to kind of give these these companies guidance. I mean, like she said, these are very expensive products. Um, and when you understand what's coming in the future, that may impact your buying decisions because the service hubs that we have today are very specific and they're not particularly mobile, although you can put them on carts and cart them around. Um, the big one in particular, a lot of companies had to reinforce walls just to hang them up on a wall. Mm -hmm. But it creates this kind of situation that's analogous to a, a desktop PC where you have to go to a certain place for the most part to use one of them. And for the second generation, they're changing that pretty dramatically. Um, you can still have a place for those devices, of course, but they're a lot more mobile. They're lighter. Um, they can be attached together in unique ways, which is really cool. And um, I think they, what they're really trying to do is just be transparent about what's coming and when, and, and that will help those companies make a, a buying decision. Not to mention the fact that uh, the expected lower pricing, we don't know what the pricing is, is going to end uh, the certainly Microsoft's goals for the device is to open it up to far more types of businesses. Um, Surface Hubs today really just speak to kind of a small group of enterprise, giant enterprises that have these on site facilities where they have meeting spaces and so forth and rooms that you can check out through Exchange and so forth. Um, this type of device is going to open up the market pretty dramatically to smaller businesses, right? So it, it, it could be more of a Mainstream is not the right success, the right word, but a mainstream-ish kind of success, <laughs> if you will. You know, compared to service. What pr what what price are we talking? We well, have we, no idea. No, we don't know. none. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what they said, which is it's very tricky. Again, it, they said it's going to be priced comparably with competitive devices. But what's a competitive device to this? I yeah, mean, people nothing. immediately. Right. People immediately think Jamboard, but I don't think this really competes with Jamboard. That's the Google from uh, Google. The Google thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so either. Although I'm trying to orient this, sorry. Um, but uh, that's the only thing you could possibly say. And so one of the things that's interesting about Jamboard, of course, is that it's a lot less expensive than today's Surface devices. And the right. hope is that these new Surface hubs will be <laughs> less expensive than the current one. Do you think they will though? Because my I, I can't help but be a little skeptical on that because if you look at these new Surface Hubs, they're amazing and you know they're yeah, really high-end yeah, yeah. devices, right? And so well, I think I think some people could be very disappointed if they think, oh, they're going to drop this to four thousand dollars to match Google um, Jam right. Jambox, right? And I, I, if you remember when they did Surface Hub One, they announced a set of pricing and then the devices were delayed and then they jacked up the price before they started selling them. By right. quite a bit of money, so yeah. I, you know, I, it. I'm just. I guess I'm being a skeptic on this because I'm like, is it really going to be for a more of a mainstream and more you know, of a business? Barry Joe, I think I speak on behalf of anyone, everyone, when I say I'm tired of your negativity. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, um, so we should no, we should right. we should we should talk about this because Paul, like when when we get pre briefed on this, Paul was so excited. He was like, I, I couldn't see him, but I could imagine him jumping up and down in his chair. Because um, yep. he said to me, "This is like amazing. Aren't you excited?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I guess I guess I'm excited." And he's like, "No, you have to be excited." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, wow." Well, well, okay. I mean, I okay. Was it I, the, I didn't was it the to talk video about... that got you so excited? What was it that got you so excited? Well, yeah. So uh, they had sent the video to us ahead of the briefings that we had, and I didn't have a chance. I, I was traveling Monday, and that's when I saw that. Yeah. So I didn't have a chance to even look at this until this is literally very five minutes before the briefing. Yeah. So I watched this video, and of course it starts like a Surface video, it's all these internal components, yeah, you like yeah. whatever. But you know what, I, the reason this is exciting um, is because I, I genuinely feel that this is going to make this device more accessible than the previous Surface hubs. And I mean that in, in the broadest sense possible. I think it's going to be more accessible uh, to more businesses, like I said, I, I do think it's going to be cheaper. Don't well, get. Don't I like that, that the vertical. Uh, the, the portrait mode yeah. is nice. Mm. It's not going to be cheap, but it will be cheaper. That thing where she's doing with her finger, by the way, is very important, and we should, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> How well, many no, times have important. I said that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero wig, ladies. She, she um, pressed so, a button on the on the left that uh, was oh, next no, to no, her. She pressed a fingerprint reader on the. On oh, the side that was a and, fingerprint reader. So that's a major difference, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, by the way, this is, it's so funny because 
my dream when we had, uh, you know, when we said we were going to do Skype for the shows, mm -hmm. I asked sure. my engineers to create a portrait mode avatar because yeah. that's yeah. how people are, right? They're, yeah. that's right. they're upright. And, and, and no so one they, uses a computer in portrait mode. No, you know, really, and no one Skype doesn't really have a portrait. It, it mode wasn't practical. Kind of. There was it was a very difficult. Yeah. We could have done it, but it was a difficult, expensive thing to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, in addition to being more you know accessible to businesses, there's also an accessibility angle to this, which, unlike some of Microsoft's accessibility stuff, is is very real, and that means be because this thing is so much lighter and so much more portable, and doesn't need to be on a reinforced wall. It could be, we'll have all kinds of steel case carts and things for these things. Um, someone in a wheelchair can use this device, ah. can you know, wheel up to it. And, and, you know, the thing can go up and down and around. This actually and, looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. And the way you can so, mix four together they're showing right now with... Yeah. Right. That's very interesting. Yeah, so you can have four of them together in portrait mode or two in landscape mode. Um, they support 4K cameras. They, the screen resolution, we don't exactly know, but it's 4K+. plus. Um, that's a look at the steel case, one of the steel case stands for it. Um, I just... I don't look, I, I've been doing this for a long time, you know, and Mary Jo has too. I, I can, and I did in an article, point to the handful of times I've, I've kind of been this blown away by something that Microsoft did. There aren't that many of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, the last one for me was Windows Phone. And as originally announced, the original vision for that thing, it was very exciting because Microsoft was not copying what uh, Apple did with the iPhone like Android did. It was really kind of rethinking the smartphone and trying to center it around people that, you know, instead of around apps and, you know, rethinking how this thing could work. And I thought that was very exciting. Obviously, that thing created and I'm an idiot, but I, that thing was very, <laughs> it was very exciting at the time. And, and this has that same sense of possibility, that same sense that you're seeing the that the future is changing, that the, the original Surface Hub was very, you know, cool. When you see it in person, and it's amazing, it, but the pricing puts it out of your brain because you, you're never going to get one. So, yeah, you know, I mean, whatever. I'm looking at this and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, it's great, but 25 grand, I don't think I'll be buying four. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if this yeah. thing was five grand, and five we don't, grand again, is different. In fact, five yeah. grand, then I'd think about it f for avatars for our shows. I mean, I, yeah. I could, yeah. I could totally justify five. Grand. Well, of course, one of the most interesting stories about Microsoft, not just the this year, but for the last few years, has been the rise of Satya Nadella, the move to cloud, and the actually shocking embrace of open source, Linux, and uh, and the like. One of the things Microsoft did in 2018 that shocked, I think, the world, was acquire the website that is really most used by open source developers to post their code, GitHub. Everybody was freaked out. Let's see what Paul and Mary Jo thought about it. So here's the thing yeah. about this uh, GitHub acquisition. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I think Ben Thompson did a great job explaining why it makes sense and why Microsoft was willing to pay a lot of money for a company that only raised a few hundred million and is struggling to stay profitable. And he points yeah. out, may never Microsoft may never make any money with GitHub. It's just not set up that way. Right. And that's part of the reason I think Microsoft is a good steward for this service. You don't have I, to make I, money. Yeah. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's not like when they bought Nokia and it's like we expect to sell X number of phones and we're going to... We have this growth trajectory, blah, 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 whatever. No, no, this is... It's really about hearts and minds and being part of that community. It's, in, it's super important to the future of the company. I, I don't know about the price. I'm not sure what it's worth. I didn't. I saw that number and I thought, <laughs> like that's kind of a big number. But I believe that Amazon and Google and other companies have been looking at it as well, and I'm sure that was yeah, part of it. A lot of bids. A lot of bids. Yeah. But yeah, I think. I mean. Go ahead. Mary. I think it was CNBC who said Google actually did bid. Yeah, you know, and Atlassian was looking at yeah. them, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, this is uh, so for people who don't know what GitHub is. By now, probably everybody does, but it's the place a lot of open source projects put their code for sharing. Uh, a lot of places, a lot of comp a lot of open source and other projects uh, take submissions there. It's a way for, to coordinate multiple programmers. You know, it's a code repository, but it also has code review. Has a lot of features. Um, and, uh, you know, it's clear that Microsoft, it, this is part of their strategy to woo the developer community, particularly, I think, the open developer community yeah. uh, to Microsoft. The problem yeah. is so many, I see so many people in the open I community can't. saying, I'm not going to, I'm moving, I'm going to <laughs> GitLab, which is one of the competing 
uh, Git yeah. repositories I, uh, had a huge I feel spike. Really bad for those people that they. I mean, even in our, not even, in our world, in, in the Windows community, we joke about this on the show, right? Microsoft will announce yet another Linux, blah, 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 whatever it is. And so I was like, oh, here we go again, you know. Um, this has been going on for years. I mean, yeah. we're just joking now. I mean, we accept this. We understand it. It makes sense. Um, but like I said earlier, I, I think there's this segment of the population out there, developers, maybe a higher percentage of them too. They haven't gotten the memo on the Microsoft thing. Mm. You know, this isn't the Microsoft. No, we have Cheshire long Canada memories. Monica. And Microsoft under Balmer yeah. was really the sworn enemy. No, but I always I use this example. You know, you don't blame Germany for World War II today. Right. You know, you, you don't. You no, know, but there's still people who won't buy Volkswagens. Yeah. Yeah, because Although, the diesel gate thing, that thing makes sense. <laughs> all the cabs, all the cabs in Tel Aviv are Mercedes Benz. So there you go. Yeah. Right? Sure. Which yeah, is, I mean, it's not, you know, I saw some people saying, oh, I can't do it. Remember, they called Linux a cancer. It's it was, it's more deep seated than that. I mean, Microsoft was openly attacking open source. They were waging they a sued. patent war against they, them. Yes. <laughs> they were charging yes. I mean, people. They were. It was bad. They could, they it could was still really be charging people. Have, has anyone ever come out and said, oh, by the way, Microsoft called and they said, you know, that licensing fee you've been paying us for the past 17 years, you could, yeah, that's forgiven. You forget no, you about know, it. But you know what they do now, which is different. You know, you don't see. Remember, every every week we would see a press mm -hmm. release about a new company they were attacking for patents, right. and yep. they were all Android. Oh, the, or a new companies. agreement they reached with someone who didn't want to yep. get sued because they right. were implementing some kind of exactly. Linux or Android based whatever. Did yeah. you notice that stopped? Yes. Oh, that's definitely stopped. Yeah. I don't because think Microsoft will ruin it. No, I don't think they're going to ruin GitHub. I mean, they, they're one of the biggest users of GitHub. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One of the concerns, though, some uh, software developers have is that Microsoft might peek at their repository. I mean, I this know. stuff's public anyway. <laughs> God, I don't it know. Is. I know. I think that's kind of strange. Uh, well, there are there is a whole part of GitHub that's private, right? And that's the part they charge people for. And right. you can have non-open source code in these private repositories. I mean, Amazon has do. repositories yeah. on GitHub. Google does. I mean, so people are like, oh, yeah, if you were a Microsoft competitor, would you put your code there? I don't know. Guys, they oh, they have rules they have to live by. That's why people aren't afraid to put, you know, really confidential data in things like OneDrive and SharePoint. There are rules. I mean. I, I Listen, <laughs> uh, your bank, whatever it is, is probably a lot less stringent about security controls right. on your online account than Microsoft is. Right. Um, I. Yeah. I and a lot less sophisticated. I but whatever. Yep. I, this issue of trust, I can't help people with trust. Yeah. All you can do is look at Microsoft's record and see what they've done in the past, in this century, and right. last uh, four years. Look at how the yeah. <laughs> look at how the country the company has changed. And I get okay. Go to GitLab if you have to. But I, I this has really surprised me. I um, just it doesn't the, surprise the depth me of it. at all. It didn't surprise it, me. It at feels all, like even. it's a twenty year old argument. You know, it, it's. Well, and I also you know have to think before Microsoft spent seven and a half billion that they, <laughs> they almost certainly, this. well, more than thought about it, surveyed <laughs> developers, right? And said, well, yeah. would you mind? Yeah. So they must think, you know, I feel, they know they're going to lose guys, some people, but they must think most I will feel stay. like there's two camps, right? Like there's open source developers who are practical and they use open source because, you know, they those tools are what they're familiar with and, and such. Then there's the FOSS camp, the free and open source people, the Richard Stallman people. Those guys are never going to like it. They're never oh, going to no, go they're with people. it. Right? right. They are people. Boss <laughs> are they? users are people too. <laughs> okay. Well, to be yeah. fair, the and free I feel like that's the dividing line. never liked GitHub. Uh, yeah. Stallman <laughs> continuously complained that GitHub was using yeah. open source uh. code, not sharing back. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, GitHub is not beloved either. I will give hardcore. him credit for being consistent. Yeah, he hates everything. <laughs> Consistently terrible, <Yeah>. but consistent. <laughs> no, but among the hardcore, GitHub wasn't it either. But yeah, right. um, almost everybody I know used GitHub. I mean, that really was, mm -hmm. you know, that was the default. Yeah. One of the, one of the <sighs> yeah. really smart things Microsoft did in this, though, I think is making Nat Friedman the CEO of GitHub because he's right. the CEO of Xamarin. And Xamarin, you know, it has its critics too, but I feel like he's young. People kind of associate him with wanting to be cross-platform and open. And I think he was yeah. a really good choice for picking somebody yep. inside I to be couldn't CEO. agree more. Yeah, that's right. The first <laughs> item is Xbox. But you know what? I'll begin with that. 
Wait a minute. There will um, never be a new Xbox. We're done with console gaming. No. Everybody knows streaming is the thing. Even Microsoft's nope. going to do it. No? No. Well, yes. <laughs> but. Yes, but no. So um, at E3 on Sunday, they confirmed which a story which I think Paul had first, which he is there will be a successor. He tweeted it first. I tweeted it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Brad, I'm not a very good reporter. <laughs> You're not. I you don't know, like, you know. You, you can't monetize a tweet, right? He was kind of slacking on that's that. That's been my experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible at but this. But <laughs> here's the crazy thing. So at, on E3, at E3, they said there'll be a family of Xbox consoles. What? And Brad found out the code name is Scarlet. And so there's been dispute in the, in the Microsoft reporter ranks about how Scarlet is spelled. I feel like Brad that's said, not a new name. Well, hmm. Brad says spelled with two T's, but the original reports of it had it with one T. Frankly, my well, dear, I don't um, give a damn. In the internal documentation, there's two T's. It's two. Oh, yep. Paul's seen the paper. I'm not saying or confirming that, Leo, but um, I did state that rather emphatically, didn't I? You did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say there are two T's in the original Microsoft documentation. Yeah. Let's go to the record. Let's go to the record. <laughs> It's, it's on Twitter, so it's got to be true. Yep. Right. That's and then what, the other piece that's... Well, the other piece well, that's wait, new is but don't, 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 don't skip over the... Go, but don't skip over the Xbox. No, this is still part of it. Oh, this okay. is part of it. Whew, I thought maybe Joe was moving right no, past guys, that. Just, <laughs> guys, no, I'm staying with you on Xbox. Here. When is the question? 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. That's two years. 2020. That's actually not that far away. 18 months. Makes it sound closer. My cat is squawking. She's very excited about the new Xbox. Her nickname is Scarlet. No? S C A R L E double good. Her <laughs> nickname is Suicide Squad. But I think that um, if you look at the <laughs> schedule for Xbox One, this one falls into a neat kind of cadence they've established about three years after the Xbox One, which was about three years after the original. Um, yeah, I think the way Microsoft has done things, you can pretty much guarantee that it will be backward compatible, if not Xbox One branded. Um, and the question, there's all kinds of questions. Even the documentation, mm -hmm. it's not really clear what this thing is um, as far as architecture, feature set. right? Yeah, yeah. What, why, do you, why would you release a new console? What would be the need? Well, it, it's the same need they had with the Xbox One X, right? Which was they, they did the cost-reduced version first, the Xbox yeah. One S. They do a bump in, fu in functionality, which I think is important, uh, 4K HDR in games. They had to do that, and, yep. Yeah, and I think that um, it, you can look at it like that, the next step of that. Um, I'm sure at the time they'll probably promote it as true 4K or always 4K. Right, or, as opposed however to you want to say it. upscale. But the nice thing about it is it's that continuum of compatible devices, right? And so if you invested in Xbox One back in late tw 2013 when the first one came out and you, you didn't upgrade to the S, maybe you didn't go to the X, now you've got this thing where all of the games and all of the content you have just moves along with it. And I, I think that's the new way... At least the Microsoft is doing things. I don't know. You know, Sony seems to be on a different path, but um, you know, they've looked at the console world and and decided that this eight year, whatever it is, run where nothing changes is un, is just unsustainable. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I so. What does a family of consoles mean, though? Is it just going to be like Xbox One S and Xbox yeah. One? Or yeah, I, that's I, I don't I never heard that. I just heard they were working on a next yeah. gen console. So my guess, based on just logical assumptions, is that they'll mimic the situation today where they have a normal mm -hmm. and a high end one, and that you know the the new normal might be what is the Xbox One X today, but cost reduced, and then the new high end will be whatever they call that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the the upper end, always 4K for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. console. It makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. So okay. Hmm. Interesting. And if it's two T's, it's named after a person. If it's one team, it's a color. T, it's a color. So yep. Aren't two T's a color? No? No, one T's a color. Oh. One T's huh, a color. Okay. Two T's is oh. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Or Scarlett O'Hara. Scarlett O'Hara. Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> I know. I tweeted back to Brad. Is, is one of them codenamed Rhett? And I'm like, maybe he doesn't know about <laughs> oh, Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> He doesn't know. Fred's, he has no idea. Brad was born about. in the 2000s, Mary yeah, Joe. He, he was. Has no <laughs> idea. Brad, what are you, what, who? Uh, okay, good. This is a good, uh, good uh, leak. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. uh, and okay. it's timed with uh, E3. So yeah. it probably isn't exactly a, uh, a inadvertent. Well, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the various code names and products and things that Brad found out about are coming or were found out at the same time. Like they were all together. So yeah. Xbox is really just part of it. Yeah. Um, I had, I had found out about a new Xbox generation back in late March. <laughs> And that's pretty much all I know, just that it's happening. And at the time, what I would have said about it is, and what I probably did say about it somewhere, was I had always expected Microsoft to be moving to this streaming service for the next thing, that they've never made money making the hardware. Why bother? Maybe this is them learning their lesson. It's the one place where they have a lot to offer. And then uh, the guy I talked to about this at the time in late March just kind of laughed when i said that and he's like yeah that's that's not happening <laughs> you know it's just not it's too soon it's just too soon too soon yeah and uh now i think it's time to talk something about paul and i have really had it been a little bit of a bet noir for us is the lack of a usb-c power yeah. power supply on our surfaces Circus. yeah let me let me reverse these two related stories because there was the news story this week there were microsoft I guess told The Verge that they were were going to release the long-awaited, for some reason, <laughs> Surface USB-C dongle, right? Yeah. And what do we know about that? Anything? It's eighty dollars. Businesses. Know, businesses get it first as of this Friday. We don't know when consumers are going to get it. Or we don't know if it's going to be at retail. So, but the question with this thing for me is, what is the point of this? Like, it, it's. It's a. It yeah. looks like a surface power supply, so it's got a brick. The brick has a USB-C port in it. It's not Thunderbolt three. Right. Um, the other end is a cable with a Surface Connect fin on it, if you will, a Surface Connect connector. You know that yep. magnetic thing that slides into the Surface yep. Connect power port on it on a Surface PC. Mm -hmm. So why why would anyone need this or want this? Right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of any good reasons. <laughs> like, if you wanted to go from your Surface device to a USB-C peripheral of some kind, you could use a $10 off-the-shelf USB-A to USB-C dongle. Plug mm -hmm. it into a USB port and right. be fine. You're not getting Thunderbolt speed, so there's not like there's right. some advantage to this thing. Um, I guess you could, if you had a powerful enough USB-C charger, you could plug that into the, the box but then you've got this extra complicated thing now where there are three pieces instead of two, um, mm -hmm. where you have the, the USB-C dongle, you have the USB-C cable, and then you have whatever power plug for that USB-C cable. Yeah. I don't quite understand what the point is. It's, it also yeah. appears to only work with the Surface laptop and the latest Surface Pro. Right. It does. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I, don't, I don't get it, <laughs> you know, basically. Yeah. I mean, is it just for a checkbox? Like to just say, do you have USB-C? Well, you can connect it to USB-C peripherals. Sure. Oh, we have it. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, it seems pointless to me. I mean, I, I, phasing in USB-C as a port on, exi on right. new devices is fine. They did that with uh, Surface Book Surface 2. Book two. Also yeah. not Thunderbolt 3, though. Right. But at least it's there for video out and for USB-C peripheral connectivity. And mm -hmm. you can actually charge over it. It's a little slower than using a normal charger, but it does work. Yeah. But it was this thing, this news story, this resurfacing, if you will, of this mm. peripheral, sorry, yeah. um, <laughs> that made me rethink, of course, as it would, about the USB-C Thunderbolt controversy with Surface. Why don't mm -hmm. they just adopt this thing? And I keep thinking with each, each subsequent generation of Surface PCs that we're going to, mm. you know, there'll be some, it might take a, t a period of time, but there'll be a transition where mm -hmm. they'll go from Surface Connect, which is, which is USB-based. And they will transition to Thunderbolt 3 over USB-C, like the rest of the industry. But it occurred to me when I, it was this thing, this this triggered this thought. You know, Surface Connect, which is the connector you see on this dongle, of course, mm -hmm. is USB-based. Like I said, I wrote in an article that it was USB-3 exactly. It's not exactly USB-3, but it's, it's USB-based. It has the same basic limitations of USB from a performance perspective, meaning for display purposes, you can drive two external displays, but if they're 4K displays, they can't run at 60 hertz. You can only drive one 60 hertz external display. 
this is kind of a minor point for most people, but Thunderbolt 3 also has um, better transfer rates for data, and, and so those peripherals can be a lot faster. Mm. Um, I think the reason they say they don't or haven't, at yeah. least one reason is backward compatibility. And they didn't yep. they put out a statement like ages ago saying, don't worry, we're never going to back away from the Surface Connect port. So if you can buy things that use it and you can have cases made, you know, that yep. take advantage of it and don't, you don't have to worry. So this factors into my new theory. Um, okay. That's interesting that you said that. Um, companies that provide PCs to the enterprise, Dell, HP, Lenovo, one of the guarantees that they make to the companies who are their customers is that if you buy into a platform, whatever it might be, that the peripherals, the expansion uh, devices, the you know the batteries in the old days when you said batteries that would slide out instead of DVD drives and so forth, will mm -hmm. remain compatible with future versions of these devices for some period of time, usually seven to ten years. Uh, Microsoft has a rich history of 10-year support cycles on enterprise products. And you could imagine that for Microsoft, the importance of the enterprise and of businesses to the service line is very strong and that they want to have that same kind of guarantee. Uh, and I I understand that. And actually, that's a legit concern. I, I If you think about that from a like a consumer perspective, the, the note, the, the, the thought that some future generation of Surface PC will have a power supply that is not compatible with the power supply you have on your previous computer is nonsense. Mm. There's no reason for that kind of backward compatibility, especially when it hampers performance in the future. But for businesses, that actually makes sense. Yeah. So here's my thought, and I'm curious what you guys think about this. I think they are going to add Thunderbolt 3 capabilities to future Surface PCs, but they're not necessarily going to do it via a USB-C port, although, by the way, they could do that as well. I think what they're going to do is rev the Surface Connect port. Ugh. Oh, connector really? huh. to support Thunderbolt 3 capabilities. And that the, in, in order to make this work, you could have, if you kind of imagine what goes off of this thing, there really aren't that many things. Mm. Power power cables and, and power you know adapters. Yeah. And the Surface stock. So there could be a, a third generation Surface stock. It, it could look identical to the new one, I guess. The fin mm -hmm. might be a little different. If you mm -hmm. plug it into a new device, it will support Thunderbolt 3, 60 hertz, 4K, two displays. Plug it into a Surface Book, one Surface Book 2, whatever legacy device, mm -hmm. it will just work like it used to, like USB. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was writing about tips I had gotten on the next versions, the revved versions of Surface Laptop and mm -hmm. Surface Pro 5, yep. you know, the current one, um, I keep hearing they're going to have Surface Connect still. Um, yep. But I also heard they could get a USB-C port. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, they did it on probably Surface won't be, Book. Like you're saying, too. it probably won't be Thunderbolt, right? Well, I, what so I don't here's know. The thing. I, they could do that, right? In other words, right? They could. They, they could. They, there's two ways this could go. I, there's no way they can ignore this. No. They could do Thunderbolt three over USB C, like everyone else, but right. retain the Surface Connect for backward compatibility. There's no reason they. Yep. There's no reason not right. to do that. Yeah. But I'm I'm wondering if they're not going to make Surface Connect hmm. more powerful, and there's good reason to do it. Um, uh, Brad. And I, were, I was talking to Brad about this, and he pointed out to me that if you think about how Surface Book is architected, the screen has the piece, the uh, chip in it. Right. It has the yeah. RAM and it has the storage. When you plug it into the base, it mm -hmm. connects it to the DGPU and to the USB expansion. Mm -hmm. That thing, that it's that's a Surface Connect port as well. So mm -hmm. it's the bandwidth there is limited to the power of that thing. Mm -hmm. Um if if they advance the platform so that that thing is Thunderbolt three, you know, or that same capabilities, yeah. that would enable much more powerful bases, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the current little limitations of Surface Book two is you can only do so much with that because you you can only drive so much bandwidth over that connection. Yeah, hmm. I think you have an interesting theory. I don't. I'm not a hardware guy, I, and people could probably poke holes in this theory, but. Um, I, I've been really kind of down on Microsoft for not supporting this. And they, they always talk about, well, there are certain cables and plugs that, you know, fry PCs and do things like this. But I, no, I point no. at HP and Dell and mm -hmm. Lenovo. They've, they've, all, they've solved this. Yeah. They've solved yeah. this. Mm. I, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm not going to buy a laptop that doesn't have not only USB-C, right? but USB-C charging. Because it's just the way it is now. Mm. Welcome, yeah. welcome to the modern world. USB-C yep. has been a failure in so many ways. That that Type Three connector is weird. Doesn't mm. you can't tell anything from it. You don't know if it's data, video, charging, all three, none. 
Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know. So it's it is a failure, but that doesn't mean we need a new one to replace it. Mm -hmm. And if in a proprietary Microsoft charging solution is just old school. Nobody does. I mean, not nobody, but fewer and fewer people are doing that. It's basically once you get past a certain price range, it is nobody. You know, yeah. you yeah. can still find. I just reviewed a Lenovo Flex um, Six laptop. It actually still has a little barrel power plug. Those are that's actually kind of uncommon these days. Yeah, it's getting I mean, more. Computer so. starts at yeah. four hundred seventy-five dollars. Right, so right, that's why. Yeah, but think, you could, uh, <laughs> you could, you, you could charge it over USB. <laughs> oh, look at that! See, that's something you don't get with almond milk. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. taste, taste, good taste. <laughs> this is the USB C of creamers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would argue it's the Thunderbolt three of yeah, creamers. Thunderbolt three of creamers. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Except no substitutes. I'm using the USB two point <laughs> <laughs> Skim milk. Whole Did milk. this make my thing yes, slower? Skim what milk. is this thing? He's using skim milk. Skim. Oh, that should be like even lower, shouldn't it? <laughs> it's USB 1.1. It should be. There's one story that just will not die in 2018. I think we. I think in 2019 we can assume this is not going to continue to come up. But for the most of 2018, the rumor mills, fans, even you know people at Microsoft kept saying. When's the Surface Phone coming out? There is no Surface Phone. Get over it, Paul. It's um, from Windows Latest, and they said a Microsoft Store employee said Microsoft is going to be launching a Microsoft-branded Android phone soon. Okay, you go back and you look. There's some guy having a text conversation with some guy in a Windows store, like a retail employee, and he's like, yeah, we've got a secret Android phone coming. Guys, I no. No, <laughs> I talked to Brad and Mahetti about this that morning <laughs> and I said, how do we, you know, how do we handle this? I know. And the, the consensus was we have to ignore this. This is the dumbest thing That's we've ever heard. That, but then Our, uh, this whole thing that happened today with the EU, I saw people out there on Twitter saying, okay, so if they come <laughs> down on Google now and they can do uh, a version without the Play Store, maybe mm -hmm. Microsoft will make an Android phone. Guys, Microsoft's not going to make a phone. Because when you look at Microsoft and mobile, the one thing they did get right was the store. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that is that the yeah? That's, that's where we're I'm going. Saying. That's the that's our strength. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. No, and you know they they don't want to make a phone. Uh, in fact, there was a Wired um, podcast that went live this week too, where they were interviewing Panos Panay, and the reporter on the podcast said to him, "So there's going to be a Surface phone." at some point wow, and he just said let me say this as plainly as i can there is no such thing as a surface phone I think and that's unequivocal. there's not gonna be one <laughs> that's that's yeah, pretty I, so yeah i it, like what everybody keeps saying look now that google's going to be punished microsoft's going to do an android phone no they're not what they're going to do is what they're doing right now right they're going to build on top of android build microsoft yeah. launcher and other apps and services and that's what they're going to do on the consumer side. They're not going to build another consumer phone. They are not. Is Andro so Andromeda is not a phone. A phone. It's also no. not Android. <laughs> but no, it's right. Windows. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's not a Surface phone either. No. If it if if it if it exists. If it no, ever comes but to market. It, it's, you're right. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I, people are trying to kind of co-mingle these two concepts, uh, the are. notion of a Surface phone and then this Andromeda thing. Andromeda is, if it happens, is a new form factor. Microsoft loves doing this. They, they yep. haven't actually done it all that much, but they, my God, do they love this kind of thing. And it's also a PC. <laughs> you know, it's like, sorry, guys, it's running Windows 10. It's it's not a, not a special hybrid of Windows 10. It's not like a little, you know. A fork right. of Windows 10. It's Windows 10, and it's yeah. Th there is some specific software for the hardware, as you would expect. Um, but it's it runs Windows apps. That's the point. Right. So yeah. you have to kind of level set what that means because I, I think it's smart for Microsoft too because I don't think they can afford a high profile failure like they had in mobile. Yeah. But a device like this, when you sell it as a PC, you're, yeah. you've got a much smaller market to worry about. There, Microsoft only has I think it's 1.6 or two percent. Of the PC market, uh, it's a tiny business for them. So this thing doesn't have to go gangbusters for it to be yeah. successful relative to their PC. I should business. point out, though, that really none of these are phones anymore. 
They're portable computers. Yeah. Right. And that's what a lot of people said. So when Panos Panay says it's not a phone, it's just him mincing words. Okay, maybe, right? Like, because if, yeah. if it's a PC with telephony capabilities, is it a phone or right. isn't it a phone, right? right. Uh, we're using telephony capabilities right now to do this podcast. On a PC. I, know. Right. I will say that when my phone rings, I, I look at it in a confused state. Yeah, why is that? Do, <laughs> you know, what sound me is too. that? Yeah. What is that I know. sound? Like, wait, someone's oh my God, calling it's terrible. Me? Is a truck backing <laughs> up? What is that? I, I think it's at this yeah. point safe. It's not. A, it's not in any way an insight to say that these are portable computers. Right. And these are new well, computing form factors, and that's it's really the best what iPod that's ever been made. It's a, <laughs> it's a portable commu internet communications device. I don't even remember the other one. Yeah. It's an yeah. internet communicator, an iPod, yep. Yep. and a phone. What was the other one? An, an internet. Phone. You forgot already. A phone. Right. It's well, the an phone. internet yeah, the communicator, yeah. an iPod. <laughs> As phone. an early user of the iPhone, I can assure you that its phone capabilities <laughs> are so probably hot. among its weakest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it doesn't need to be a phone. That's the. Yeah. the right. I think incre I mean, every time I say this, I get all these, especially older people saying, "I use it as a phone," mm -hmm. but it is oh, I, it is a computer now, right? And yeah. I, uh, computer, by the way, includes, as you just pointed out, the ability to communicate face to face or audio. That's mm -hmm. that's not a phone. That's just communication. Yeah, I use this thing. Mostly like I used to use a Zoom HD or an iPod. I play podcasts and audiobooks. I listen to music. Yeah. I, there are a couple of apps I use like Duolingo, which I use for language learning or whatever. I do a little bit of reading, although I, I prefer a bigger device because I'm 50 years old and my eyes are terrible. Let's not forget but, Pokemon Go. I don't watch. <laughs> also 50-year-old man. And I, um, I have watched with amusement as my daughter did that for 15 minutes two years ago. Um, it's but, back, baby. I, I know. Um <laughs> And that's about it. You know, it, yes, there are text messages that occur. I post to uh, social that's media. That's not a phone, phone thing. That's messaging, right? Yep. That's not even no, I know. And, and I sometimes thing. will talk on the phone. I find it awkward, you know. I don't like the, it. The, yeah. The less frequent that it happens, yep. the less I expect or want it to happen. Mm -hmm. That know? may be saying something more about us than it is about the device. But I, Maybe. <laughs> well, think about what's, uh, I mean, I, on my own phone, I, this is no longer true because I did, I just got a legitimate phone call the other day, but. I, the last 10 calls I got were all spam. Spam, yeah. Before that. Yeah, me you too. Know? All yeah. of them. In fact, the most confusing thing about that last call was that it wasn't spam. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> who, who are you? not red. What does it mean? Uh, Google may be adding... This is an interesting story, and I, <laughs> and I thought, what? So uh, you can currently buy a Chromebook. Uh, a good example is a Samsung a Chromebook, which is also <laughs> sold as a Windows notebook. Right. Um, and there are a number right, of these. I think the HP NVX2, don't they also sell it as basically a Chromebook? I think yeah. they do. Uh, well, they do. it's not actually well, the same computer, but yeah, there is a version of it yeah. that's a Chromebook. Yeah. And now you don't have to choose. Well, not now, but rumored, you know, Google's been working to... I have cat hair in my eyes now. I, so <laughs> I know. Google is rumored to be bringing... Um, Windows 10 compatibility to the Pixelbook and then to the Chrome, you know, to higher end Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. Thing is, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm trying to figure out why on earth they would do this, right? Um, and people always point to boot camp on Mac and they say, well, you know, Apple does it. Why wouldn't they do this? And I, my response to that is that has nothing to do with why Google would want to do this. When Google added boot camp to Mac, the Mac was in distress. It didn't have any apps. Um, they were re its customers were asking for it. Apple makes money selling hardware. They do it today with the iPhone. They did it before with the iPod. They did it with the Mac. That Their model is the hardware sale. If you want to put Windows on that thing and create a Franken-Mac, you can do that. Um, that's not Google's model. In fact, Google's model kind of relies on you accessing their software and services in as many places as possible. Um, so they want you to run Android. They want you to run Chrome OS. They don't care where you do it. That they're not they're not making any money selling you a, a pixel book, so I'm curious. Like, and I'm curious what you guys think about this. I don't understand. It can't. And I'll just throw some of the obvious things that people. You know, the 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 boot camp thing was one. The second one is for developers, and this is maybe plausible, but I feel like the Linux app compatibility solves that problem for most of the people who would be in that sphere, you know, as a developer, either you're going to be like a kind of a web type developer or an Android app developer, Android studio mm -hmm. sure runs on Linux. I assume it runs on Linux must. Um, so why, 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 I mean, why do you guys think I'm just, I'm, I really don't know why I Google has mm -hmm. never confirmed that they're doing this publicly. They've never stated why 
Why are they doing this? No one it knows. It could just be to screw with Microsoft. <laughs> oh, that would be that, interesting. Okay. That answer makes more sense than anything, actually. No, that's that's a good answer. Because you know Google why? Because, does a lot of okay. things just to screw with Microsoft. Right. So originally, this is just going to be Pixelbook. But then the implication is it could be any Chromebook that meets the hardware requirements. Um, mm -hmm. And if you think about it, you know, a lot of a lot of people who look at Chromebooks, they're like, yeah, but I have this one Windows app that I really need to run. But if I, I could, I, I would you totally use this hardware. What if you take that restriction away? All right. Let me, let me give you a, something I've made up. This is just I was because I was really I was thinking through this and it kind of speaks mm -hmm. to what you just said. I'm really I'm curious about the viability of this. I wonder if there isn't something to uh, dual booting is kind of a lousy thing for a normal human yeah. being to do, right? If, if right. you're dual booting between two versions of, of an operating system or two different operating systems, you're spending a lot of time not working. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. moving back and forth. And it's like the Ale the Alexa um, Cortana thing. You know, which one do I have to use for this? You know, i got to think about yeah. that. What if there was some way for Chrome OS to run Windows apps, but it required Windows to be installed on the hardware, mm -hmm. right? Is there any technical feasibility to what I just said? So like through a virtual machine somehow? Or how? Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. But in other words, you know, I, obviously there are these wine type solutions you have in Linux for running mm -hmm. Windows apps mm -hmm. in that environment. But what if, because, you know, Chrome OS is a lightweight operating system. What if just mm -hmm. having Windows on the system somehow enabled apps to run under Chrome OS? Because that would make more sense. It solves the problem. In mm -hmm. other words, I need that one app, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, Photoshop, or you know, just make something. So maybe matter. like through emulation more is what you're maybe. kind of hinting Yeah, I don't know. Or... I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm just, but yeah. is there yeah, some yeah. advantage to having Windows installed on that system? Mm. Where side by side you could kind of run it. You know, virtual environments in the Mac do this. You can yeah. uh, install Windows 10 to Boot Camp and go into Parallels on uh, on Mac OS mm -hmm. and load that thing virtually. Now it takes up you know memory and disk space, right. obviously, but um, I don't know. I, I know because I, I, I saw yeah I saw people and the the original stories from XDA Developers dot com and I saw some people in the comments saying. I bet it's not dual boot. I bet it's going to run in some other way, right? Like, oh, so like someone, maybe, okay, so someone else has thought of this too. Good. So somebody else was thinking this too. Like, and, and then if you look at their original story about this before this most recent update they did, the, the um, original story was more that Alt OS would let different operating systems run on Chromebooks, not just Windows, but other operating systems. So. Okay. You know, so I guess the, the thinking there might have been Linux. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, it could be as simple as a virtual machine. I don't know. You, you've got yeah. Windows loaded in the background, and it's just sitting there to run that yeah. one or two apps yeah. that you kind of need. Maybe, maybe. I yeah, agree. Dual booting, people over to dual booting OS, right? is like, no, right? Like, that's just yeah, such silly. a big no. It's silly. <laughs> yeah. Silly. Yeah. That's not a that's yeah. not a mainstream consumer activity. No. That just doesn't Maybe, make sense. Yeah, dual booting might not have been the the way they should have described it. You know, maybe they just used that but because that was a way of did describing Did Google this. describe it or XDA developers? I mean, XDA developers. This is just a rumor we should point out. Google hasn't said this, right? Right. And uh, so don't we don't know how there's... Google's going to describe it. it. Here's one scenario. Maybe Google has no intention of doing this, but place the story just to kind of solidify the notion that a Chromebook is a real yeah, computer. It could, run, it could run Windows if it wanted to. Of course, you wouldn't yeah. want to. Someone, uh, one of my, I can't remember who told me this, but someone said, you know, there's probably a Google engineer that needs to run Windows. And he's like, look, I want to use Google hardware. <laughs> Let's just enable this. You know, this you can make yeah. this minor change to the firmware or something and it, <laughs> and it works. Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, and then finally, Minecraft education. I just put this under Xbox. It's not really an Xbox topic, but Microsoft announced this past week that they're bringing it to the iPad. And my initial reaction to that was, I thought that was on the iPad, but I guess it wasn't. So it is coming to the iPad, and I think that is happening in September as well. Excellent. I really, they put the, uh, we, we were talking, uh, remember the last time we talked about Minecraft for education, I was all bummed that you have to have an education. Mm -hmm. to use it but uh i was 
pleased to see that they're slowly migrating some of the education stuff over to bedrock, uh, including they just yeah. they're going to migrate the uh, chemistry. I was going to ask you a chemistry yeah. set. So they're going to bring that's cool. Yeah. So you have to know that though, and then go in the settings and turn off edge. There's a turn on education. I think there's an education checkbox. So if you're using, features. yeah, if you're using, I I don't think it's in Pocket Minecraft, but eventually everything will be Bedrock, the Java version. Um, uh, well. So if you're using the Java version, uh, look in your settings for an education checkbox, and then you can make water and stuff. I think this is that's cool. so cool. Let's do this right now because it's so cool. Yeah, see, if, see, if you can, see if you can do it. it may, I don't know if it's been able yep. yet. I, Version um, I'll try to find my uh, the link that I saw that on. That is amazing. Yeah. I'd love to see more of these features because you know, everybody loves Minecraft. And uh, I do. I play a lot of it. And anything that can, yeah. It, and it's coming on the iPad you mentioned. Let me see. Um, it unlock. Compa they call it the Compound Creator. The Chemistry Resource Pack, which was announced for schools in January and uses game-based learning to introduce chemistry concepts. This is from GeekWire. It features a full periodic table of the elements and a compounding table, much like the crafting table you're used to. Okay, not it's not there yet. Oh, maybe it okay. was. Uh, this summer, see. consumer Minecraft see. players on Windows 10 PC and the Xbox console were given access to the Chemistry oh. Resource Pack. So, okay. in the game, go to... Oh, you got to do it in Create New World. It actually is part of Creating uh, a New World. Part, okay, so, you have you. to go to the Create New World option under the Cheats menu, Turn on Education. <laughs> it's funny. So, it's cheating. That's a smart way to get kids to uh, to get into it. <laughs> oh, it's cheating? Like it. I'm doing it, man. I am in. I'm in. So, Create a New World. This works on Xbox as well. And then Turn on Cheats, and then there's an Education Cheat. So, That's that amazing. actually is really, really cool so remember last week our code name of the week was largo and i said it's this thing called xbox all access but we didn't really know what that was well they announced it this week xbox all access and so it's what it is is news. a bundle a bundle of hardware software and services yeah. so the part that i was kind of surprised about is consoles are part of this yeah, you get you, the you have you like two, rent a console, right? Is that how it it's works? It's kind of like renting, except you're really buying it. It's rent more like own. it's more yeah, like when no, you get a phone yeah. from a mobile carrier, got right? It, got it. And you can space out the payments. Yeah, you can space out the payments, but you're actually buying it. Like you, if you cut your contract early, you have to pay for the hardware what you didn't pay already. Oh, so it's very much like that phone thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you want the um, Xbox One S, one terabyte version, it's twenty one ninety nine a month. If you want the Xbox One X, one terabyte version, thirty four ninety nine a month. Okay, why do I care about this story? Yes, Mary because... Jo, please explain yourself. <laughs> Does it mean I'm going to buy an Xbox? No, but it. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, look at what they're doing. This this is what they're going to do. Also, maybe later this year when they announce that Microsoft Managed Desktop thing, we keep hearing about which is a bundle of a Windows 10 device plus support and servicing, and you pay it as a monthly fee, like a financing deal. And so I'm like, yeah, this is what they're starting to do more and more at Microsoft. Uh, they're doing financing Mary deals. Jo, let me just predict a Forbes coming Forbes article in which it explains that legendary Microsoft watcher Mary Jo Foley has once again <laughs> confirmed that Microsoft – is going to put is Windows charging? 10 available as a service. Yep. Remember, yep. they said they weren't going to do this. Would I get a computer, are... too, with the, the deal? Like 34 bucks a yeah. month and I get a computer and Microsoft yeah. Windows? That's interesting. Yeah. That's actually yeah. really interesting. I bet you're right. It is. And so what they're yeah. doing, this is the, the reason, why are they doing this? These are financing deals, right? They're, they're trying to expand the addressable market. Like they're trying to get to people who look Kinda at like Xbox. Kind of like an x86 go, oh. processor with segmented memory architecture. Exactly. No, no, Just nothing like, like that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know what it is. Here, I got a theory. Can can yep. the dummy sh t talk for? No, way in. Okay, way in. so Microsoft's wanted to do Windows as a service forever, right? They've wanted to rent software forever, and they realize nobody wants to do it, or some people don't want to do it. But if you Most throw people. in a computer, if you throw in hardware, then it's like, oh, well, that's a deal. Well, you know, 
this is something I've taken advantage of. I mean, obviously, I'm not a financial guru or whatever, but, you know, best case scenario, you shouldn't buy anything you can't afford. But the reality is we live in America. It's the 2000s, whatever. So it's rent to um, own. The biggest you know, well, scam. <laughs> well, it's only a scam if you charge interest on it, right? In other yeah. words, if at the end of the two years you've paid $1,000 for a $600 item, then yeah. you've lost you know, because yeah. um, tied into this is this notion that hardware is going to go down over time, too. So this Xbox One S and the Xbox One X are both going to cost a lot less money. Do you own it at the end of the term? I mean, yeah, if, you do. OK, because there is yeah. really no resale value. So it is. No, just but the, payments. Well, the yeah, but I, I think the reason what makes it OK and I, I think what puts it in the middle from kind of a financial perspective is it's it's a zero percent interest loan. So. You're, what you're really doing is literally they're chopping the payments by 24 and whatever that comes out to 35 or 22 dollars, uh, and you're paying for it over those two years. And and in this case, what Microsoft is throwing in, they're not really throwing it in actually. So you're saving over whether you had purchased uh, Xbox Live Gold over those two years, 60 dollars a year typically, and Xbox Game Pass, which is 9.99 a month. Um, this makes sense only if you intend to do all three of those things. Buy the console, subscribe to those two services. If you don't, you're going to be spending more money than you intended to. You know, so there's there's some incentive, but there's there's some something to think about. But you know, when you buy a new iPhone directly from Apple, when you buy a new Pixel phone directly from Google, and if you want to take advantage of their in-house financing, assuming I guess you have good credit, whatever. I've done this over the past couple of years. It's zero percent financing. You get to spread the payments over two years. In my case, what I've done is I've always paid the phone off within three months or so. Um, but it's it, it's better to me than putting you know th throwing down a thousand dollars. I'm not walking around like Daddy Warbucks with money falling out of my pockets. So this is kind of a you know I could see where this is useful to people. So mm -hmm. it's that model. You know Microsoft yeah. offers something like this for Surface, by the way, through a different company, but same type of thing. And um, you know you're not leasing it, right? It's not like a car right. lease where you have to give it back at the end. You own you own it at the end, so you're not really paying any more than you would have anyway. In fact, in the case of the Xbox One S in particular, you're paying a lot less. I think it was $130 less over that period of time. Um, you know, so it, it, it's potentially a good deal for people. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's meant like I think the Microsoft Managed Desktop thing will be too, and the Surface Plus subscription thing was also, to get people who are kind of like, ooh, I don't want to shell out X number of dollars for this thing right now. But if it was only $21 a month, yeah, okay, I'll do yeah. it. So they're counting on it, making, you know, introducing a new audience for Xbox and later this year, if they do the Microsoft Managed Desktop for Windows 10 devices, you know, people who are like, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to spend Eighteen hundred dollars for a new PC. Oh, but I could get it for like thirty dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it probably would be more than that. I think. I think a thousand dollar iPhone works out to forty dollars and change. Um, yeah. You know, the Xbox One X today is five hundred dollars. If you add to that one hundred and twenty, mm -hmm. and then two forty, that's three sixty. Whatever it is, uh, eight hundred sixty dollars. It's thirty four ninety nine a month. It, it, it's. It, it's that price is approximately if off the top of my head thirty dollars less than paying for all those things uh, right up front, but mm -hmm. you're getting the thing for a much you know lower you know, a lower cost of entry or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. that. It's you know thirty five dollars a month. So um, yeah, I I'm a couple of I'm just thinking. First mm -hmm. of all, what's the vig? I, know. Big? I like talking what? like a gambler. No, I what? like the word big. And I, no, no, big That's is like, good. This what's is, Microsoft's cut? Big comes goes back to the Microsoft Antitrust trial. We all understand this term. <laughs> um, are, is, is it just what the? I mean, in other words, are they? <laughs> Let absorbing? me tell you what it is, Shylock. Okay, here's what the big is. <laughs> I want no, my pound of um, flesh. Are they absorbing yeah. the financing costs, or is there a little money? They're going money through a third it? party, which in this case is a Dell financing thing. Oh, okay. I I okay. believe. I, I I've not so really a little gone. I've not gone through. The, no, if you qualify, there's zero interest. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, zero percent for well, twenty-four months. Yeah, yeah. and then the months. other thing I think they're going to do because Apple and, and others have done this, and then what they end up doing is doing the new phone every month, every year thing. I could see Microsoft saying two year every two years. Yeah, you automatic just right. keep paying, and you'll get a new uh, computer. Get the new yeah, I wondered if they were going to do that because the, the Surface one does do that, right? Like you, you always get moved to the yeah. latest model, I believe. Oh, see, 
I, I um, didn't know they were already doing that. That's a. I think that's consumers. I think like that. I like that. So here's the thing. I I actually think that makes lots of sense for a phone, right? Uh, phones are those weird things where you know we're we're having these debates over whether a thousand dollar smartphone makes any sense and blah 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 whatever it is. But if you think about the things that you use every single day and the things you use the most versus the things you might use a lot less, the the phone is almost always going to be right at the top. And right. and it's it's a little weird to kind of admit this, but I think it makes a lot more sense for most people to spend most of their perceived budget for technology on a phone and a lot less on a computer. You know, mm. and so you can make the argument if you kind of further that the notion that you're going to get a new phone every year or at the longest every two years makes sense because that that kind of is people's buying patterns. You know, whereas computers are spread out over time. You know, if you pay if you paid for Surface through what's it called Surface Plus Surface, uh, um, yeah, yeah, whatever Surface, that program yeah, is called, whatever that, it is. Yeah, and let's that. let's say you got a zero percent no interest you know loan essentially. Yeah. Two years went by, you bought a Surface Pro 4, a Surface laptop, whatever it was, and it was 30 or 40 or whatever dollars per month, $50. Um, I would hope that most people would then continue using that computer, at least for a year or two more, to kind mm. of get the most value possible out of that thing. The, the technological innovations that are occurring in PCs on a year-to-year -year basis are not really that great. Um, it may be really cool in four or five years, to suddenly be introduced to the world of Thunderbolt 3 and USB-C and wireless charging or whatever it is, you know, all these different things you might have on a, on a computer. But um, year to year, I don't know, right? I, I know. mean, it, it's really right. that big of a difference. It's a different you know, kind of thing, you know? Yeah, there are some people who always want to have the latest and greatest. Like my grandfather, yeah. I think I've said this on the show before, he used to want to get a new car every year. So he'd trade <laughs> up his car every single year yeah. to get the latest model of the car. Wow. Me, That's... I'd be the person who rides it the same car for 30 years. Yeah. And So he left yeah, okay. you nothing is what I'm hearing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for some reason, I see this guy with a pipe, a mustache, a little uh, you know, sure. hat, driving a Buick. A little jaunty hat. Jaunty yeah, little that hat. Was is that dad? Yeah. yeah. He always yeah, wore a grandpa. suit in order to drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> One of the things Paul and Mary Jo uh, did during the year and will continue to do in 2019 is go to big Microsoft events. Actually, that's one of the reasons we really love having Paul and Mary Jo on the network because they are in touch. They talk to people at Microsoft. They know more about what's going on at Microsoft, sometimes than even Microsoft's own people. Uh, we uh, brought them to Ignite. We had a live from Ignite, and we talked about some of the things Microsoft announced at the Ignite conference, including unified search. Okay, so I, when I looked in this book of news, 27 pages, the thing I thought was kind of the unsung hero announcement or most interesting announcement was this idea that Microsoft is creating a unified search experience across Windows, Office, Edge, Bing, and more properties that they have in the future. So the reason I think this is interesting is right now if you try to search in various Microsoft products, it works really differently if you're in like SharePoint versus Windows versus Edge. Mm -hmm. So their thought is to put the search box in one consistent place and make it behave in a consistent way across all of these things. Right. I, I It seems weird that we say this is like some revolutionary thing, yeah. but it is kind of a re revolutionary thing. I uh, had gone back and watched some old videos from the, I guess it would be the early to mid 2000s when Microsoft was talking about unified search in Longhorn. Apple was talking about whatever the search, I think it was Sherlock search or whatever it was called at the time in Mac OS X Tiger or whatever. And it's weird, you know, here we are so many years later, we're still having this conversation. But of course, the products we're talking about span kind of a, a weird gamut of desktop apps, mobile apps, uh, web sites or web apps, online services. Yep. Um, and, you know, when you think about the integration that Microsoft's doing across off of, uh, Microsoft 365, right, where they're combining previously separate products, this thing, this type of thing starts to make a lot more sense. Right. And the, the part that's probably the most intriguing to a lot of listeners is Windows, right? Because we've seen some leaks about Windows 10 that showed Cortana being decoupled from search and Microsoft kind of rethinking how search will work in Windows. Right. So now we know this is going to happen. And they've said it's coming to Windows in 2019. They didn't share exactly what that looks like or what that experience will be, but it kind of tips their hand a little bit on the next version of Windows. 
Yeah, I would say so. I, I, I think the implication for Cortana is potentially very big, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I asked, if this, does this mean anything about Cortana not working with Windows? And they said, no, you still could use, Cortana still could use Microsoft Search as a resource in her interactions. Her, I still say her, but <laughs> yeah. With you, depending on the query. So they're not like saying Cortana goes away because they're doing Microsoft Search. But I, I actually think it would be good to decouple this experience. And yep. the thought is, you'll get two kinds of search. You'll get intranet search. So if you're searching for information inside your company, like about human resource policies, or where is this document, or how do I do this particular thing on my machine, those search results will come up for that. But they also are going to continue to serve up web search results and keep those two things separate. And also, um have insight or entry into the Microsoft RAF, right? Right. So for organizations that are kind of all in on Microsoft, where you have this stuff across various products, you're going to be able to surface graph-based search results, mm -hmm. you know, in Windows that have to do with some back-end service. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I, I think this, arguably, this is the biggest news from the show. Oh, and then there was the time <laughs> the presidential alert went off during the show. I should mo note at this point in time mm -hmm. that I'm going to turn on all my f phones because it oh, is no. 11.18. Right. And it is yeah. possible that sometime in the next half hour, we will get like a, a, little Cheeto a will word appear on my phone. from the Cheeto in chief. I'm sorry. <laughs> what did I call him? Cheeto. In that's, that's, not, that's disrespectful. You're right. No, come on, Leo. It's Commander in Cheeto. Let's get it right. <laughs> Um, the, actually, and it's not from the president, even though it's called a presidential alert. It's from FEMA, and it is the first test of the presidential alert system. You cannot disable it on your phone. So I'm leaving all my sounds on because I want you to hear. It won't. Yeah, <laughs> see, this actually is an interesting question because um, I, I know in radio, because I, I take this test all the time, I'm not allowed to in any way rebroadcast the EANS alert tones. Mm. <gasps> Just got it. Uh oh. Just got yeah. it. This is a test of the. You got it too. We're hearing it everywhere. Of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. Yeah, oh, could Lord. Be more All my phones present. are going off. <laughs> oh no! Help me! Help me! Oh my God! <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. It's gonna so have a bunch of phones. The one thing you gotta hope though is. He, he actually can't ever send out an alert. I'm not, I'm not clear on that. FEMA said that this is not, that he can't, but okay. I'm not clear on that. I'm just worried if, because of how he tweets and if, how often. If the president maybe. can set off a nuclear war, I don't know why they wouldn't let him set off a presidential <laughs> sure. alert. Sure. All right. Well, there yeah. it is. There's the alert. I hope you all enjoyed it. This was only a test. No action is needed. That is not cause for alarm. Windows 10 1809. We at least we now know, don't we, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. When, I we, guess. when we last <laughs> gathered, there was we were we were singing the praises of new matte black Surfi Beats mm -hmm. style headphones with Type C chargers, and yes, 1809 had rolled out. It's like yeah. weather in New England, Leo. All you have to do is wait a few minutes, and everything changes. Wow. I know. Uh, then we hear that people's data is being deleted, and Microsoft has... It's funny, because how you phrased this really tells us a lot about the mm -hmm. author. Microsoft said, we've paused the rollout. <laughs> Others said, they've re-yanked re it. They've, re mm -hmm. they've, they've canceled it. They've right. rejected revoked it. it. They revoked it, they, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. This is probably not the right day for me to do this, but I could go through this John Cable post <laughs> one line at a time. Mary Jo could grab her gong, and we could have a whole episode because I I find this to be the most duplicious uh, I, I thing I've ever seen. I, it it just is not. It's semi not believable. John Cable yeah. being the Microsoft person who explained what was happening. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what does he yeah. say, and why does why do you? Paul Thorat yeah. find it duplicitous or delicious <laughs> because he contradicts himself a bunch of times. Okay. You know, uh, there's a, there's a tiny number of people that this impacted. I, I like I said, let's, I let's, give, the he let's said, give the number. He said the number. They said one one hundredth of one percent. One percent. One in ten thousand. And, and yep. Paul and I both said when we saw that number, 
And we've heard from every single one of them, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, but no, wait a minute. How many it. people do you think got the... Because uh, you had to be a seeker, right? This didn't yet get pushed mm -hmm. out. Right. So, so what do you think? A million, two you know, million? I, I, yeah, yes and no, right? I mean, I do feel like there's a... A segment of the population, I, granted, these are probably not people like my wife or normal people who occasionally will go into Windows Update and see if there are updates, right? They want to be up to date. They want to make yeah, sure the computer's I okay. Do. Yeah. Uh, that would be one way to get this update. Um, yeah, that's how, I, that's how I got it. <laughs> right. I just, um, I, the, the whole secret thing has always bothered me because it really is being deployed. It, it, it's... There's kind of a shadow word of games going on here yeah. where yeah. Uh, we're going to pretend we're not broadly deploying it. But actually, if you click the button, you'll get it. And I, I, I've never liked that. But the other issue here, and I think Mary Jo put this in the notes, was just that um, you know they skipped an entire release milestone to release this thing on an arbitrary date. Yeah. They never did a release preview swing. Not that that would, would have changed anything because Microsoft's – Microsoft doesn't pay attention to Windows Insiders anyway, obviously, because uh, people complained about every one of the problems that's ever plagued any of these releases ahead of release. Uh, that's been one of the interesting and bad things about this process. But but um, you know what? I, th I feel like release preview is kind of their safety net, right? Like that's the people who want to be yeah. on the slowest possible ring. It's kind of your last hurrah before you say it's done. And so the fact they skipped that this time and just were like, okay, it's done. It was yeah, kind of like, okay. what, would they have right. caught it? Would it, would it have point. shown up more prevalently? I don't actually. I don't believe so, to be honest. But I, yeah. But actually, what you said is is very meaningful because there's another game that Microsoft plays, which I don't think either one of us appreciates, which is that they kind of pretend they don't RTM this thing and they don't really talk about yep. finishing it and they never right. kind of come out and say, "Here it is. This is mm -hmm. the one, and here are the dates. And if you are on the insider preview and you want to get off, you have until this date to do it because we're going to start shipping new builds." And they did everything quicker with this release, right? They 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 kind of slipstreamed it forward and pushed it out to the public. They closed that magic window. Remember, between the time I wrote yeah. the tip and the time the show started, on that same day last week, mm -hmm. they shipped a skip ahead. Well, actually, they skipped a what we call an R6 or a 19H1 build. Mm -hmm. So the fast yeah. ring, without any warning whatsoever that they were going to do this. Even in the past when they've been kind of vague about the schedule, uh, Donna, Sarkar, someone would get on Twitter or on the blog and say, look, if you want to get off the train, you know, we're not mm -hmm. saying exactly what day, but someday this week we're going to ship a build. You need to get off the train. I, I find that whole yeah. thing to be very, I don't know. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I, I don't mean to, I mean, I like these people. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but it's, it's just unprofessional. And it, it, it's, yeah. I, I, I just feel, don't I understand feel like it. if you're, yeah, I feel I feel you're right. Like if you're going to change the rules of how this works, you need to warn people you're going to change the rules, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like skipping the release preview and then suddenly rushing out with 19H1 and there's no like window in between. It's like, oh, wait, I get what you guys think you're trying to do. You're trying to speed up the build process so that updates will happen quicker and people yeah. will feel like it's just more seamless. But that isn't really what's happening. Instead, people who are used to the way you've been doing it are counting on it right. continuing that way, right? And then it, when you change real, the rules. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a system that is supposedly in place where you have different right. rings and, and, and different yeah. ways to test things. And, and the attention to detail here is non-existent, right? They didn't ship any slow ring builds for months and months. And then all of a sudden they ship yeah. a bunch of them. It, it's just been very sporadic and weird mm -hmm. and poorly done. And... Um, yeah. Uh, but regardless, I mean, um, I wouldn't, it's not possible for me in my current state to explain what happened here, but at a very high level, um, this is the type of thing I've been complaining about for years now with Windows 10, unfortunately, which is that there's a, there's a twofold problem. I don't feel that the insider preview program speaks to the broader community of Windows users and are not mm -hmm. doing a good job of communicating to Microsoft what actual people want in this product. And Microsoft is not taking the feedback that they're providing and doing anything meaningful with it. Mm. And we see this again and again and again. Every time there's a screw up like this, we had the the Kindle blue screen thing a year ago. We had the mm. botched release of 1803 earlier this year, and now we have eight, uh, 19, oh, geez, 1809 going out <laughs> uh, and then being pulled back. Yeah. Every single time, whatever the issue was people had in fact provided that feedback that this is a problem and you need to fix it. And they just ignored it.
Mm-hmm. So one one of the things they said in the blog post this week about, you know, it, it was almost I, at first I was like, oh, this is really good. They're doing almost like a postmortem about what went wrong. And they described this whole thing about mm-hmm. known folder redirection. Right. And how yeah. um, autosave and OneDrive may that also may have been part of the reason that people were losing their data. So I'm like, OK, good. They're giving the report. But then I was like, but they didn't actually say how this got through. Right. Right. They, like, they okay, actually here's did what happened. say that they heard about it. That's the <laughs> right. They said they heard thing. about it. Right. They and said so they knew then about the, it. They did. And then they Which is good sorry. that they admitted that. Right. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, but then so yeah. then their their solution going forward, which we don't know that much about, is they're going to have some kind of a severity um, indicator in the feedback hub now so that people can upvote when something is very severe. Uh, and make it more apparent to the engineers on the team that, hey, I'm not just complaining like dark mode isn't dark enough. I'm complaining like my data is getting lost. Like, let's you know give what? that a higher rating. Here's, But I'm, but here's I'm the, unclear how that's going to work, right? <laughs> I am clear that it isn't, and here's why. A, that kind of thing should have been part of the bug reporting process from day one. Are you kidding me? You don't, you don't have any method of someone identifying how severe this problem is? B, they should already have a system in place to understand why things are severe. For example, if a lot of people report it, um, yeah. you know, or the same thing, or they get a lot of upvotes on something. I think that's the point of telemetry, right? Is that right. You, you kind of analyze the data in some way that's meaningful. Right. Did they get Let's a lot see, of upvotes on this though? Because I, when I read about this, I think from Raphael, um, there weren't that, people weren't upvoting the data loss thing, which I'm like, wait, why weren't they? Yeah. Okay, but if, <laughs> like the Kindle thing, for example. If right. something you're doing as innocuous as plugging in a USB cable with a Kindle attached to it is blue screening your computer. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need to have 600 people upvoting it to understand why that's a problem. You know, yeah. I, I right. you know, again, this is a company that sells its AI prowess to customers and it doesn't even have the internal tools it needs to determine what's important and what isn't important. Mm-hmm. If you see the words dark theme in a bug report, you can pretty <laughs> much be assured it's not super important. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just, yeah, I just, I struggle with this because, you know what, you know what's weird. Uh, this year, we've seen two Windows 10 feature updates that have been devoid, completely devoid, of nonsense new features. Right, really high quality mm-hmm. from a content standpoint. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, Windows has returned the development of Windows, the core development of Windows, has returned to the the adults at Microsoft, the Azure Group, right. So you would think that this would be the high quality part of the operation at this point, that the people we need to worry about are the experiences people are going to try to slip stupid stuff into the product. Instead, it's been the complete opposite. This has been like bizarro world. The actual yeah. process of shipping Windows this year has been a nightmare. And the guys I'm kind of afraid of, frankly, have done a great job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And I don't, I don't even know what to think anymore. It's, it's kind yeah. of strange. Well, you know what I think, um, and I don't have any way to prove this, but I feel like the policies and the processes for how this whole rollout, how testing works first. So, there, you know, there's the canary ring, which is Microsoft testing their builds, then the fast ring, skip ahead fast ring, and then slow ring release preview mm-hmm. ring. That still remains in place, right? Even though we've sure. shifted where the center of power lies now for Windows engineering, they're still using well, that same system, I believe. Who say though, like, uh, but who, like, like, what, what part of the org is that under? In other words, I would guess under engineering, win- right? I would guess so too. That, right, I yeah. would guess so. Too. Yeah. So, and until somebody in engineering says, "Guys, this isn't working. We need to rip up the policies and the infrastructure and the way we've been doing this and start over and get this under control," it's not going to change. <sighs> Yeah. Ultimately, uh, you know, this is something in Mary Jo, obviously Leo, both everyone here knows this very well. I mean, if you go back over the years, no matter what the beta testing process is, the problem with Windows ultimately is that it's a hugely complex piece of software that right. runs on some incredible combination of hardware configurations, probably yeah. uncountable. And you can test it however you want to test it. It doesn't matter if we're talking about Windows 98 back in the day or Windows XP or Windows 10 today. Mm-hmm. Once you start pumping that thing out to the, to an actual crowd of human beings with all their weird mm-hmm. computers, people don't test software and don't provide feedback. You start seeing problems you never see. Of course, 
Uh, Halloween is an important time of year for everybody here at Twit. Almost everybody does dresses up in costume. Often I don't get the chance to do so. Fortunately, Halloween came on a Wednesday this year and during Windows Weekly. Unfortunately, I picked about the worst costume you could use <laughs> during a uh, an episode of Windows Weekly. I, I had no hands. I had no way of running the show. It Well, watch. Yeah. That's the audience that really matters. Right. Sounds like Leo G. So, I guess my question is, mm -hmm. if uh, they've got one... I'm now going to stop taking drugs before we record this <laughs> podcast. It's me, Pikachu! Hi, Paul! That's amazing. Hi, Mary Jo! I never would have known it was you. I couldn't let Mary Jo suffer in silence all alone. No. You have to, you have to <laughs> don no your problem, costume though. as well. No hands. <coughs> I can't, mm. uh... Hard to type with that. I can't... I can't function this way. <laughs> Plus, I can't hear you because I don't have any headphones in this. They don't fit. <laughs> I bet it's hot in there. <laughs> what am I hitting? Okay. We're going to go I back can't. to Windows yeah. Weekly. I can't, I can't feel my feet. <laughs> We oh, know what you know. I see I know. Uh, the UPS man has arrived. Oh, my God. What happened? There's Santa. a giant pile of boxes in front of me. Santa came early. These must be Apple <laughs> watch bands. No, no. Those are the pencils. Should I open just uh, anything? Should I just wait? <laughs> this is Windows Weekly, and this these all seem to be from a company named AI. Right. Artificial intelligence? Hmm. Who's that? Maybe it's from Cortana. Could be. She sent you a little package. <laughs> this isn't all of them, by the way. Well, Lisa's already taken hers. So uh, go yeah, ahead, Paul. What were you saying? I know, I know. Where is he? Where's Waldo? <laughs> I feel like Apple has taken over the world. <laughs> all those boxes have been opened, by the way. <laughs> in fact, I've got the iPad right in front of me. Hey, everybody, I hope you had a wonderful 2018. And here's to a very peaceful and happy 2019. I know it's been a rocky year for many of you, but I hope your family and friends are around you during this holiday season. And I think of you all as our family and friends, and we're so glad that you shared your holiday with us this year. I look forward to uh, these best ofs every year because it's a chance for me to see some of the memories we've made in 2018. And I can't wait to bring you more great Windows Weekly episodes all through 2019. Let me raise a glass to all of 